Welcome, everyone. Another sports journey with myself, Lake Lewis, here from Fork and River House in New Jersey, sitting here along with uh, the guy on the end. Quiet as always, does a good job with this. Comes down from uh, New York, New York, Cristiano Oliveira. What's going on, Chris? What's up, everybody? All right, and then uh, right here in the middle, we have a uh, New York Giant wide receiver, Victor Cruz. What's going on, Victor? How you doing? Nothing much, nothing much. It feels good to be here. All right, so, I mean, this is a show we have a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, some crazy questions, uh, you know, but for the most part, uh, people out there who are saying, Victor Cruz, this is the kid that last year in the preseason did some major work against the New York Jets, uh, three touchdown passes, and uh, your life has never been the same since that. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely changed. Uh, my phone's been ringing off the hook. A lot of friend, f friends and family I never heard from in a long time were calling me after that game. But uh, it was just it was just definitely a good feeling just to do it in my hometown and, and have my mother and family in attendance. And it was just it was definitely one of the best moments of my life. And then being against the other team that, that likes to call the new Giants Stadium, mm -hmm. their stadium. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows it's still Giants Stadium. Definitely. That, that actually had, a, you know, extra feeling, extra emotion towards that, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely playing the Jets and, and you know, that rivalry between us and them and, and kind of putting a flag on that on that field, on that on that stadium, trying to claim who who should really <laughs> own it and stuff like that. Um, it was definitely an added incentive to do it against them. So, and, you, and you know, we had some uh, some Jet players here over the past few weeks and, and, and they were actually. You know, I, Vladimir Dukas, good friend of ours, you uh -huh. know, but, but they were sitting here saying that they kind of run the town now. And, and Chris took offense to that. He really did. <laughs> I, I mean, as a player, naturally, you know that that's a rivalry for bragging rights in New York. But but the Giants have more history than the New York Jets, clearly. Clearly. I mean, we go back. We go back a lot of years. And, and Vlad, that's my guy. We went to college together. We went to UMass together. And, and he's, he's a top notch guy. So, he know, he understands the history. You know what I'm saying? He. He, he's just saying that because he has to. He's on the Jets, and he, he has to say that. But he, deep down inside, he, he knows the history. He knows who, who that stadium belongs to. I'll tell you, though, it, it was a little bit hard at the beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. And Vlad is a great guy. Yeah. We've had him out a couple of times, and I love the guy. You know, I'm always messing with him on Twitter back and forth. Great guy. But it took us a while to get him going. Yeah. And once we started talking about Rex, it was like, boom, new man came out. And, yeah, you know, and all of a sudden he starts talking trash. And I'm like, Vlad, you all right? Like, you know, who, that, that, that's what we're supposed to do. And, you know, I'm like, wow. And, and, and all of a sudden all this emotion came out. Mm -hmm. and, and I was surprised. And I was like, wow, this guy. His words, remember, where they play for Super Bowls. Yeah, that we play for <laughs> Super said, Bowls. which one are you talking about? Because I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a great guy. But like I said, it took, it took us a while. But once he got going, yeah. sounded like Rex. Yeah, once, uh, Vlad's guy. Once you crack that shell, once you crack that that first layer and, and get and get underneath that, he, he'll definitely open up. And, and especially under under Rex Ryan, you gotta learn how to talk a little bit of trash. So. I mean, did you hear about this book now that's supposedly out by Rex, where he's calling the Giants little brothers? Have you heard about that? Really? I oh did, yeah. Did, <laughs> did, hey, OC OC came out two days ago and really was was critical of that you know he was giving it back to him yeah. because he came out he has a book and he's talking about that the Giants are the little brothers to the big brother New York Jets and I mean I don't know what this guy's been I don't know what he's been reading I don't know what he's been paying <laughs> attention to but anybody I mean I think if you ask you know the Jet players one for one they, they'd all understand they'd all tell you no no I don't know I don't understand where this guy gets this from yeah me, me neither. I mean, he kind of comes out of nowhere. Not really out of nowhere because we know he's going to do this, but just just to go in the book and do stuff like that, that that's kind of crazy. I don't know. He's, uh, it could be taking a little too far, but right, right, since when is Rex not taking it too far? So Now, when it's we talk a about – It's a contrast in yeah, styles, though. Yeah, definitely. When we, when we talk about Rex and we talk about Coach Coffin, I know, I mean, you weren't there before he supposedly made his transformation, but across the NFL, supposedly, I mean, they, they did a vote, some type of vote. And every single, most of the players in the NFL would much rather play for Rex. Is that the type of coach you like to play for? A guy that gives you the freedom or like a guy like Coughlin that even though he's not what he used to be where if you're five minutes early, you're late. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of contrast in coach, you know, which one would you rather play for? Um, me, coming up, I've always had that hard-nosed coach, the, the guy that yells at you but really loves you and, and the, the guy that, that was always kind of the mean guy and, and stuff like that. So. Me personally, I, I like that coach. I like to be, I like being told what to do, and I like to be put in line when I need to, and and stuff like that. But I could see how other guys may like the the relaxed nature of it, and, and have Rex, and, and kind of just be able to chill out and not have to act like you're walking on eggshells throughout the locker room, and, and kind of just be able to chill. And and that that may work for some players, 
And, and some players may see that as too much relaxation and go out and just go crazy and stuff like that. So, so to each his own, at the end of the day, you got to be a man and, and handle your business the, the, the right way. So He diffuses um, that, too. I mean, that's, that, that's what he does. His thing is, and, and it goes back to when he was down in Baltimore. Yep. He, he was the voice of that defense. And, you know, he, he didn't want his players giving people bullets and board stuff. But he always made it a point to uh, go out of his way to go ahead and, and say, look, if you're going to take shots at us, you better be prepared. Now, the flip side of that is your head coach is literally <laughs> the, the – here's a word for you, Chris, word for the day, antithesis. <laughs> oh. You know what antithesis means. I heard about that once upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> the total opposite. Uh, Tom Coughlin's a guy that, look, if you come out and run your mouth, you might get in trouble. You might get fined if you're giving the other team some bulletin board material. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He preaches that heavy. We don't. He, he preaches real heavy that we don't talk. We go out there and just play and, and let our play do the talking. And, and if you do anything wrong, if you even, if you even wear a Jets uh, I Hate Rex Ryan T-shirt <laughs> to, to meetings, like, he might fine you for that. So there's no wanna, need for that. Yeah, though, definitely man. don't want to get any more FedExes in, on your on your stool when you come in on a Monday morning. So yeah, there, there's there's no reason for that now at all, folks. Right now, Victor Cruz here with us, uh, Sports Journey Broadcast Network broadcast with myself, Lake Lewis, Cristiano Oliveira on the end. Also, we're gonna have some uh, some some other news a little bit later on in tonight's show, as far as the uh, as far as the network. Some I like different news. Things I like news. On. Of course, of course, of course. As always, folks, uh, if you're watching right now. Uh, we always encourage you, if you want to get into the chat box, you can go on the website, uh, www.sportsjourney.com. Uh, we'll get into some questions uh, as they come in uh, throughout tonight's show. Now, the NFL draft's going on right now. Mm -hmm. We all know about the, the lockout, and it's affected not just us in the media, but more importantly, it's affected uh, players, and especially young players like yourselves who really you know, could use this time to prove, hey, you, you saw what I – glimpses of what I could do, yep. but I want to consistently show you that. How are you maintaining right now during this uh, lockout? Um, it, it's been tough. It's been tough. Actually, um, this morning, <clears throat> Eli kind of sent out a text to all of us, and, and we kind of just uh, met on our own this morning over at a local high school and stuff, just, just, to, just to stay fresh, stay sharp, and, and kind of stay on our toes and get, get comfortable with some of the routes and, and just, uh, just kind of get off the couch a little bit and and, and stay healthy so I just my main thing is just staying healthy and staying staying fit because you know a lot of guys can get lazy and and, and think there's not going to be a season and not work out so my big thing is just to stay stay mentally into it and because you never know when when you when you that that email is going to come through or that phone call when you're going to be needed at the facility so when if it comes through from Eli you have to show up yeah man. yeah I mean, there's no there's no, there's no. Uh, I'll hit Eli back later or something like that. <laughs> like you show up when Eli texts you, be somewhere you show up. But so, here's the question though: you got, you just mentioned you guys met at a local high school. Mm -hmm. Why not at the facilities? I mean, most guys across the NFL were showing up, whether they were granted permission to get inside the building. Not this whole another question, yeah. but why not go that route? Um, I guess Eli kind of didn't didn't know if there was going to be media there. He kind of wanted to just stay away from from the kind of fiasco that might have taken place at the facility. So. Um, he kind of just wanted to go away and kind of be on our own and, and nobody around and kind of just uh, to just kind of just be him and, him and his receiver. So I don't I don't blame him for that. I actually went to the facility today, right after that, and it was nobody there. I came in and got I got my workout in. I got some food, and then I left. So it seemed pretty good to me. But you know I'm not I'm not Eli Manning at the same time. So <laughs> well, I mean, well last week you know in Washington I think the Skins were the first team that actually did this. Okay, they were meeting at a, a local high school field and. Uh, London Fletcher made that call to the players, yep. and, and I think they had like 30, 30 something players show up for that. Uh -huh. So it was a, it was a, it was a big number, and I asked a couple players. You know, Brandon Banks, who came up, drove up from D.C., came up here last week. Yeah. I asked him. I said, you know, in these kind of workouts, are you a little afraid of getting hurt? Because yeah. they're 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 unorganized, you know, mm -hmm. to the bone. I mean, you know, you have trainers at your normal practices. Yeah. You have cameras at every angle of the field. When Very you're true. doing this now, are you, are you kind of cautious as to what you're doing out there? A little bit. I mean, uh, you, you're always cautious and you kind of kind of just think in the back of your mind that you don't want to get hurt doing something that's meaningless and you're just, you know, you're, you're out there on a the, on the local high school field and you're kind of putting your body at risk. But at the same time, you kind of just don't want to think about it. You want to just play. You want to just get back on the field and run some routes because, you know, you just want to 
you want to stay sharp. If you just stay in the house and, and be scared about getting hurt, then you're not going to get any better. Well, you, just like Brandon said, you could bend over and, and trying to get a pencil on and throw your back out. Exactly, so. exactly. You can step off a curve and, and sprain your ankle, so you never know. Um, but why what not can get happen. together at Eli's house, though? I mean, if it's just <laughs> for camaraderie reasons, you know, get the guys back together to get the band back together, exactly. why not just meet them at his and house? Bring Eli, you know? And bring Peyton with him. <laughs> <laughs> Peyton's a funny dude. <laughs> Peyton's on every commercial for the NFL, so it would be fun to be. Have, have you been around him yourself? Um, I haven't been around Peyton, actually. No. I mean, we, we went down to Indianapolis and I actually played in that game and I saw him, but I never uh, off the field stuff. I, I hear he's a pretty funny dude, though. Yeah, I always like the, the commercial him and Eli had together when they were tripping each other. Yeah, plus that, that at was ESPN. Cool. But listen, let's not talk about that game down okay. in Indianapolis. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather not. Rather that not that must have been preseason also, right? I, 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 wish it, I wish it was. <laughs> now take us to one of these off-season workouts with Eli. What do you guys? I mean, what are you guys just running plays? You running routes? Um, um, you just out there tossing the ball. What are you guys doing? Um, first, we start off with um, just just playing catch, just warming up, stretching out a little bit, and then we kind of get into like some situational stuff. I like go on the slide and, and do different routes, and then we'll go outside and run some different routes. So we kind of just we'll play with the coverage, we'll exaggerate like maybe it's cover two or man, and we'll just run our routes off of, off of that. So. Um, it's, we get some pretty good work in. We were out there about two, three hours today, just about two and a half hours just getting some real solid work in. So it, it's, it's, it's really good, especially just hearing from Eli and hearing the different, uh, the different stuff he wants to talk about and, and the different points he tells me and, and the stuff he looks at when he's throwing the ball. So it's definitely a, a good thing to have a guy like that, you know, leading you on and telling you what to do. You know, Chris covers you guys, and he's been reminding me over and over and over just how deep. Now, we know about the, the, the corners now on your team, you know, mm -hmm. after what you did last night with uh, Prince. And what's the last name, Chris? Uh, Makamura. Yeah, Makamura. So. Makamura. <laughs> One Makamura. of those. Uh, you know, so you look at the depth there at your, at your corner position, but the real depth on this team is at the wide receiver position. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is obviously what you play. Uh, you look at the, uh, Hakeem Nix, a guy that could be, you know, one of the elite receivers this going into this year. Uh, you also see Steve Smith, you know, a true possession receiver, uh, guy that is kind of unheralded, in my opinion, throughout the league. I mean, he might be one of the best receivers in the league now, mm -hmm. and people don't give him that due. Yeah. Then you have Mario Manningham at the three. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you look at yourself, you look at some of these other guys. We talked about Devin Thomas, who, who as a first-rounder two years ago, may not be in the league after this preseason. Exactly. Uh, there's some other guys, uh, Ramsey's uh, Barton. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where do you fit in with this team this year? Um, I feel like I fit in well. I feel like I've, I've learned the, I learned the offense, which is which is most important. And um, I got the good, some good camaraderie with the guys, and and um, they're not they're not shy from giving me advice anymore. And, and um, I mean, I feel like a deep receiving core just keeps you on your toes. It keeps you mm -hmm. it keeps you aware. It keeps you like in your playbook, making sure you know everything. Make sure you know if you don't know this route, you got to know that route. Or if you don't know this position, you want to know all the positions. So. I kind of just um, I kind of use it as motivation, competition. I love competition. I love going out there and proving myself around around talented guys and stuff like that. So um, I'm definitely gonna look at it uh, as a competition and, and, and go at it full speed ahead. It's pretty much your your position to lose. I exactly. mean, because I, I say this to to all the players: if the coach references you, <laughs> you've done something right. And exactly. I don't mean reference you in a bad way. Yep. And, and Coach Coughlin has constantly referenced you, and and you know, goes back to, to last year when he was like, you know, this kid is making plays, not just in the games, mm -hmm. he's proving it every day in practice. So, and then you have Eli and yourself working out individually. I mean, that's got to be a good sign when the franchise player is yeah. working out with you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it was definitely a good feeling. I mean, uh, in, in the back of my mind, every time I get a text from Eli and he pops up on my phone, I still can't believe that Eli <laughs> is actually, like, text messaging my phone. Well, you need to let people know that Eli is text messaging your phone <laughs> so that you don't get that text message that you don't want to get. <laughs> exactly. 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 But, um, but it was cool. I went, I went and finally saw the coaches down at the facility, and they, were, they, were, they knew me and Eli were working out. I was like, how would you guys know? Like, I, I thought Eli, me and Eli had a true connection, and he just texts me. But... But it's cool. I mean, the coaches love it. They love that they see I'm working out. They see they like to see that I'm 100. percent I'm healthy and I'm running routes and, and doing some good stuff in the offseason. So it, it was good. So now, what other guys are working out with you? What other wide receivers? Um, so far it was just Rams. Rams was out with us, but as you know, he's off a he's off an injury, yeah. so he didn't do so sure. much. He didn't Steve's run too many in Cali, routes. right? Steve's not back in town just yet. Um, I think Manningham will be back in town this weekend. 
Um, and then I, I really haven't heard from Hickson. I haven't heard from from, uh, from Hakeem in a while. So hopefully those guys will be making their way back and I'll start getting some more text messages from them and we'll start getting have together you, as have, a core. Have you guys been given a time to report like the Jets – uh, Rex Ryan told everybody to be there Monday at 8 o'clock in the morning. Have you guys been given a time like that? Uh, we were given a time today to be there Monday. We start a different time. We start three three time workouts. You can pick one, 7.30, 9.30, and 11.30. So you can just pick one of those times to come in and work out. I'll definitely get the 11.30. <laughs> get you yeah, sleeping. The, the late guy, the late guy. Look, folks, out right now, Victor Cruz, New York Giants wide receiver right here at Fork and River House here in Fork and River, New Jersey. Cristiano Oliveira, myself, Lake Lewis. Uh, we'll take a break, and when we come back, uh, more. Uh, good stuff here. Chris, big-time Giants guy, covers them. And, and I'm sure he's got some, uh, some, some more serious questions coming up <laughs> that he's been trying to sit here and do a little fluff job. When we come back, more right here at Fork and River House. Hang tight. Do you know what most people do when they realize they're struggling to pay their mortgage? Nothing. Surprising? Perhaps. But it's just too humiliating. Too painful. Too complicated. Too scary. As the bills pile up and the pressure keeps growing, people just... stop. But if people take action, if they reach out, make a call, they have a much better chance at a positive outcome. That is the simple message the Making Home Affordable program wanted to send. We created a new TV commercial that held a mirror to the problem. We showed people literally stopped, frozen, petrified, paralyzed by their own mortgage struggles. In our research, people told us, that's how I feel. Apparently, it's how a lot of people feel. Calls to the Hope Hotline went up 25% on the day of the launch and have held steady since at nearly 70,000 calls per month. Since 2010, the campaign has received over $33 million in donated media, including TV, radio, and outdoor and hard-hit housing markets, even signage in Times Square. This level of exposure, along with robust search engine marketing, frequent events, program announcements, and a revamped website are making an impact. Website visits are at an all-time high. Nearly 900,000 visits in January alone. But the most important statistic of all, over 900,000 people have received permanent loan modifications as a result of the program. And we have an opportunity to make an even bigger difference in the lives of struggling homeowners. The federal government has extended the application period for the Making Home Affordable program for another year meaning even more people will get real help, real answers, right now. Want clear skin all over? Well, get set, because Proactive's Deep Cleansing Body Wash is back. And so is free shipping. Two hot summer deals. Now Proactive clears acne on your face and body, so you feel confident all over. And the body wash is yours free when you order Proactive today. The deep cleansing wash, it really exfoliates the skin. I use that on my arms, my legs, my chest. My skin was smoother. It got rid of the small little bumps on my shoulders and back. Proactive has a $40 value, but with today's special offer, pay just $19.95 and your shipping is free. Plus, get the deep cleansing wash free to polish your skin to perfection. I went out and bought a little spaghetti strap dress and it was a really amazing feeling. Act fast and we'll add a free travel size green tea moisturizer. Don't wait. Order Proactive today and get free shipping, but only for a limited time. Tired of lugging out your heavy, bulky pressure cleaner? You need the amazing Water Jet. It turns your ordinary garden hose into a super power washer, powerful enough to clean second-story windows. Here's how it works. Water flows through the volume reduction chambers where pressure builds until a powerful jet stream blasts through the precision-engineered solid brass tip. The control valve regulates the water pressure. Great for siding, umbrellas, and awnings. Blast grime and weeds off brick and paper driveways. It attaches to any garden hose so you can take it along boating and camping. Quality built with stainless steel aluminum 
aluminum and solid brass and only $19.95. You'll also get the bonus fan tip that creates a powerful fan-shaped spray. Scour away mold, scrub wood decks and docks, patios and pool decks, cars and trucks. Dial back the pressure to gently water flowers. There's more. We'll double the offer. You'll get two amazing water jets and two fan tips for only $19.95. Just pay additional processing and handling. Call to get the jet. To order water jet, call 1-800-973-9853. Call now and we'll double the offer. Call 1-800-973-9853. Welcome back, everyone. Fork and River House, Victor Cruz, New York Giants wide receiver in the building. Myself, Lake Lewis, Cristiano Oliveira. Uh, once again, folks, if you want to come up for autographs or take pictures, uh, we kindly ask that you wait till we go to commercial break. Uh, Victor, doing a good job with that already. Already had a couple of the kids come up. How was it for you? Okay, we, we talked about after that big preseason game, but just in general, okay. I mean, how many kids get a chance to say that they play for their hometown team, team that they grew up rooting for? Yeah, I mean that, that's definitely that's definitely something that's uh, that's, that's that I take pride in, you know, kind of just being in my hometown and make sure I represent my state the right way and make sure I represent my hometown the right way. But you know, truth be told, yeah, go ahead, tell, tell <laughs> everybody the truth because I was gonna I do it. Know. Yeah, come I on, I was now. gonna do it. Tell everybody the truth. <laughs> truth be told, I did. You know, because of my dad, he was a lifelong Cowboy fan, so I grew up a, a Dallas Cowboy fan. So I mean. I get a lot of flag for about the guys in, in the locker room already. So it's karma. That's why yeah. you. That's why you're exactly. actually playing for the Giants. Exactly. Brandon Banks, Anthony Armstrong. Those guys told me they had Emmitt Swift jersey. Ugh, you almost made me no. on the air want to vomit. What's my line? <laughs> What's what do I always say on this show? Like, the bandwagon was coming down their block. You <laughs> <laughs> have guys last week. They're Miami Heat fans. All of a sudden, hey, this easy. guy grew up a Cowboys fan because. In the 90s, that's when the Cowboys were winning. But the Giants did win in 1990 mm -hmm. and in 86. You must have been a little no kid. Excuse. You were in diapers. Yeah, no, ex was, no excuse. I don't, I don't remember those. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember those. No excuse. <laughs> you know, hopefully hopefully you guys will win one soon enough and you'll remember that one. Exactly. I want, I want my own ring. So who were you? Were you a Michael Irvin fan? I was a Michael Irvin fan. I was a big Emmett guy. Um, I was an Aikman guy. I loved that. All, all the guys, man. I, I, I hated Flozo Adams just because of. His obvious issues with blocking and doing just, <laughs> he was just do some bonehead things too sometimes. But when we were winning back in the 90s, I, I, I loved him. So Moose Johnson cool. fan and all that. Yeah. I, I tell you what was crazy, man. Redskins Park this year, you know, you, you, you do this for a living. It's, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. But I did see when they were playing uh, the Packers that week, I saw Troy Aikman walk out there. Wow. And I just, it hit me, you know. It's Troy Aikman, yeah. and he's comfortable at Redskins Park. <laughs> <laughs> I had a problem with that, man. Everybody stopped me. Hey, Troy, are you? Nah, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's a it, cowboy. You wanted them to just throw, start throwing stuff at him or something? I just didn't want him to be acknowledged. <laughs> and look, <laughs> all. one thing we like to do here on Sports Journey is obviously take the questions from fans in the chat box, and one of them is actually – Posed the question before, but once you found out you're a Cowboy fan, he said to cut him right now. <laughs> I said cut him, cut him right now. Don't waste any more time. But he's asking if you know if you're gonna make if you're gonna be on a practice squad this year, you're finally gonna make the jump. You're gonna be on special teams. What do you see? I know Lake asked it before, but he's asking again. You know, mm -hmm. so we like to ask these questions over. What do you see yourself come? You know, next season. Um, I see myself coming in and, and and definitely making a mark on special teams because a guy like me coming in undrafted, you definitely have to you know make your mark on special teams and. But I feel like I want to I want to be able to show enough offensively on as a wide receiver to just kind of kind of find a place, find find a, a, a niche on the offense, and kind of get to a few plays, some that I can work in. I, I feel like I I feel like I can do that. I feel like I can be a guy to come in on certain downs or specific areas of the field and, and kind of make some plays. So hopefully I can prove myself through through that in this off season and and in, uh, throughout the mini camps and hopefully you know through training camp and stuff like that. Look, folks, uh, obviously it, it, the draft is on tonight, too. And, and Chris, not to stray, but I, I, I got to bring this up to both of you. Daquan Bowers, the guy that I was high on. Guess where he ended Tampa up? Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. So they have him, Chris Claiborne, They're gonna to go with Gerald McCoy from last year. They yeah. already had a real legit defense. Mm. And this kid, mm -mm -mm. Like, like I tell, you know, I tell people, I was speaking to other people today, and I was telling them, 
He might not last too long in the NFL if his knee is really that messed up, yeah. but he is going to be a stud. Because yeah. now this kid's coming in with that Tom Brady mentality. He wants to prove every single team in the NFL that passed on him, he's going to prove him wrong. And if he's anything close to what he did in college, kid's a beast. You know what the, You know what I do think the Buccaneers need, not just straight, but I think the Buccaneers need some corner help because a kid that, that actually from right around your way, you know, keep to lead. Having some off the field issues. They maybe. cut them already. Yeah, I, mean, I think they, they. I think they said. Yeah, they said the they minute said the were. minute that the NFL be back in business, he's exactly. a goner. And that's a shame because he's a, he's he's got a lot of talent. He's a stud. Yeah, he's a stud. It's unfortunate to see to see uh, his off the field issues kind of interfere with his career, but he's definitely a stud, and I, I definitely wish him the best. Well, sure. well, how, how does that? I mean, not not just the key in general, but just here here it is that you're a guy that was undrafted mm -hmm. you know you're, you're making the most of your opportunity yeah uh you know i deal with guys in dc all the time that were undrafted that that are fan favorites that the coaching staff loves because of their work ethic yeah how do you feel about the players that are out there to make all of this money yeah. and at times are squandering it i mean it it, it definitely it definitely wishes i, I kind of look at him and i kind of envy him a little bit because i'd be like yo man like if it was the other way around, if like, I had that opportunity, I devote <laughs> like you don't play this game for like the, the longevity in this game isn't very long. No, it's a three-year lifespan. Actually. So like if if I had just five years of that, <laughs> what you have, like I would just do, I would put everything aside and I would just play football for five years to be set for the rest of my life and my family be set. I would, I would, I would give a, I would give a kidney to do that. And I'm, I, listen, man, I'm so glad to hear you say that because this is why I work sometimes working with the younger guys. You, you get these kind of answers. Some, yeah. of the, some of the older vets, PC, because they know some of these guys. Everybody got in trouble with them. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody yeah, knows exactly. about it. But the NFL right now, with this whole lockout going on, fans are already a little irritated. Uh, yeah. you, you know, fans are already not really knowing how in depth this thing is going. Exactly. You know, I have I deal with fans all the time to tell me you should tell the players when you're with them that they're greedy, and I'm like, but they're being locked out. They're mm -hmm. not striking. They're not holding out. They're being held out. Yeah, it's not our fault. A lot of the fans don't understand, um, like the actual what's going on, and a lot of fans don't even know anything at all. They only see what's on ESPN and stuff like that. Like they don't understand what the owners are doing, what we're doing. So. And at times, to be honest, I don't even understand. I just wait for an email from, you know, the representative on my team, and, and he kind of keeps us abreast on everything that's... Who's the Giants rep? Um, Sean O'Hara. Okay. All Sean right. O'Hara, Zach Diasi. Uh, those two guys are the, are the main guys that kind of just keep us up to date on everything. And they, they've done a great job in, uh, as far as insurance and just taking care of the little things just to keep us going. Now, let me ask you. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is about a, as real a question as you can get. Okay. Because I know some of the younger guys... Uh, who, who called me and said, listen, man, you got to give me a gig. <laughs> I mean, you got to get me on the show, man, because yep. they're running out of money. Yeah. <laughs> Is it starting to sink in a little bit? or? Um, um, not really. I mean, I, my, my financial people have done a great job with keep, putting me on a budget, and, and my mother also has done a great job the, keep, keeping me on that that's budget. That's the best of all time but right But <laughs> right now, it's really not affecting you guys because you don't get any paychecks during the offseason anyway. Yeah, we don't get Once any Once September comes around, that's when, I guess, if you guys are expecting that check to come in, now it's really going to hit your, yeah, but your now, now budget this time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, now is when the budget really kicks in in the offseason. And, um, but I'll tell you what, if this lockout really sticks and, and there's no checks coming in around August, September, there, I'm going to be going out to fill out some applications. I so. already had a player, Redskin player, tell me. He, he thought about walking across the street to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> like and, we had, and we had Vlad with us a couple of weeks ago. He said, he, you know, he, was out, he didn't sit on the show. He said it outside. We don't know if he was joking or not. But he did mention the fact that he'd go into MMA because other guys have get, done it. Would you do out. something like that? And get nah, knocked I'm out. Not, I'm not an <laughs> MMA guy. I'm, I'm, I'm soft. I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be elbow to the throat or anything like that. So. Would I, you go to that new uh, what is it UFL whatever it's called? Um, Would I you consider something like that? I mean, that's a possibility. Arena football. That's a possibility. Just just a kind of a thing to stay in shape. But I think I think um, you kind of I kind of came in this. I want to play in the show. Like I want to play in the NFL. So I don't want to do anything and risk injury and do something like that to my body. But, you know, I, I, it's always a possibility. It's always to do something. I always wanted to go and uh, work back in my hometown of Patterson and, and kind of be a teacher or do something like that back there and kind of help the inner city kids out like, like I was. And I'll probably do something like that if, if worse comes to worse. Now, you know, when you, when you had your three touchdowns in that one preseason game, they said uh, Patterson was going nuts. 
Yeah. That a lot of people actually, a couple of the coaches and stuff have showed up at uh, one of the local uh, bars there. And uh, so, so you're kind of like the adopted kid from Patterson right yeah. now. Yeah, it was pretty good. That, that, that's kind of crazy that you know that. You did a little bit of homework oh, for, that, on, for that. That's what I do, yeah. man. That's what I do for <laughs> a living. I can't come up here and look bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but it was cool. My coach told me he was like, um, he said he wasn't even watching it. And he was just taking his kids over to this little uh little cineplex thing where they have a bar and they have like a thing for the kids and he said he walked up to the bar and it was packed and like he said I walked he walked in and I scored my first touchdown and everybody just went nuts and was just jumping up and down and I was like wow like I I, I knew it was I knew a lot of the Patterson people had love for me but I just didn't know I, I told I you that like I told that. you when we first started the show that in my neck of the woods everybody was going crazy over yeah. it. I mean everybody was just going nuts every time a ball was even thrown his way everybody's like ah <laughs> I mean, that game, you well, became a, people a, like, they a were hero. Booing. They weren't booing. They were going, cruise. Yeah, I was so sad when I walked out to the field, and I was like, I was hearing, like, like boos. I thought they were boos, and I stopped. And I was like, no, the, like, what did I do? Did I, is my, are my pants down? Like, what, <laughs> what did I do? And then I got in the huddle. He had a cowboy I'm, shirt and on. I, yeah, that right. Jersey. Imagine that. And then I, um, I, I listened, and they were like, cruise. And I was like, wow. Like, I I didn't even remember the play after that in the huddle because I was just listening to the fans, but it was definitely a, I was, a great feeling. I was super excited for you. Yeah. And, I mean, obviously being a Giant, I'm, I'm always excited for anything that happens with the Giants. But I felt bad because of the white. I, I really yeah, felt a, he's bad. A, he's I a said, friend and he was I said, why is this guy going to get cut after this game? Because you, I mean, you tore him a new one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, uh, it was it's, it's unfortunate for him, obviously, but it was just like, it was one of those things where I was just running – and I saw the ball go up, and he he was on me. He covered me pretty well, and um, I kind of the ball came. I kind of just I could only get one hand out. I stuck a hand out. It stuck. So I that was good it coverage, in. though. Yeah, it, it was, was great, great coverage. coverage. No, no, no. It, it was, was just great a coverage. hell of a catch. It was great you, coverage. You have a new teammate, by the way. Mm -hmm. We just saw up there in the draft, uh, yep. Marvin Austin from North Carolina. Yeah. That's a another <laughs> stockpile in that defensive line yeah. yet again. That's yeah. why the Giants have the best <laughs> pass rush in the NFL, <laughs> yeah. and it continues. And when you get a cornerback like the guy they got yesterday that's going to be able to lock guys down on the outside and now you get this kid. Wow. That was kind of the hole on the team last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as now, the hole's always been at a linebacker. Linebacker. For sure. But if you can keep stockpiling depth on that D-line, yeah. maybe – you can kind of hide some of the deficiencies of linebacker. Nah, they, they need to they need to get that straight. <laughs> it's been a while. Listen, not I'm just, trying to hear it. I'm just not being honest. The Giants have always, at one point or another, even even throughout their bad seasons, they've always had a linebacker that you can look up to and say, wow, this, guy, this guy's doing it. And I'm not saying that these guys aren't trying. I'm not saying that they're not doing their best, but there's not a playmaker there. And they don't have a young guy there. Well, too. they have Jonathan Goff. They have a couple of guys that are young, relatively young in their early I mean, 20s. Young, young budding. Star. No, they don't. Well, that's what well, listen. They don't have a young star, old star, or you know, they have a couple old ones in Lawrence Taylor and Harry Carson, <laughs> Carlton Banks. Right. They're just not playing right now. That pains you as a Giants fan, doesn't it? No, it pains me. That was me. always the, the the face of the Giants was their linebacker. Court, you take right? away, you take away Lawrence Taylor. For me, my favorite Giants linebacker of all time was Jesse Armstead. I love Jesse Armstead. That was my guy from the U. From the U. Did you and know? Then, that? And then we got a bunch of guys from the U right after that. We got well, Mike Boley. Yeah. No, by Michael Barrow. I'm Michael sorry. Michael Barrow. Barrow's another yeah, guy from Barrow, the U. Yeah. And then you add another, you know, Antonio Pitt came over from your squad in Washington, D.C. and did a phenomenal job. Yep. And then all of a sudden, dried up. So, so now you, <laughs> but you, you still got two U guys now. You have Antrell and you have uh, Kenny, Kenny Phillips. Phillips. Yeah, yeah. Those, those guys are studs, too, man. Going, especially going against those guys in practice every day. It, it definitely definitely brings, it brings your A game out of you because you know. Once you catch that rock, you got to look around for one of them coming to, coming to get you. So You know, we did this thing when I was on ESPN. I had a, one of my shows, and I couldn't even – I always had a question of the day. That was mm -hmm. the first thing I did on the show. Okay. I couldn't even get into the show because the question of the day had people. The phone lines were lit up that day. The question was, if you could go around the NFL – this was two years ago, mm -hmm. but I think you could still ask that question today. Okay. If you could go around the NFL and put together an all-alumni team, Mm -hmm. Which school w would it be to you T today? Today, maybe USC. Today, I, I don't it's, know. it's the U and Oklahoma. USC, Texas. Maybe Oklahoma. You got they, Sam Bradford as your they, QB. They, they'd be the. They, they, they would be the fourth. Miami, Texas, USC. Some form, some way, somehow. He's thinking. He's thinking. We all I'm know not. it's not UMass because it went six and four. <laughs> all right, it I'm went gonna, six I'm and four. I'm gonna throw a team in there uh -huh. that, that a lot of people don't think about, just because of who would be the quarterback. Mm -hmm. Michigan. 
Michigan gets a lot of guys. <laughs> you, Michigan gets a lot of guys. You could get away with that. Michigan You'd have Brady as your QB. But, yeah, but, yeah, but you also, you're throwing a Mario Manningham, and on the other side, throwing Andre Johnson. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I think, right. I think Miami's still holding it down, but Texas, Texas is, is Texas up there. is up there, too. Texas is up there. Oklahoma's not too far behind, either. Those are some elite programs, and they get a lot of guys in the draft every year, even through free agency and all of that. They get a lot of guys that come in and out of this league. So Reggie Wayne from Miami. Reggie Wayne from Miami. I, well, listen, I just went with one guy, and the <laughs> I mean, story was over. But what about Florida? They Florida's coming up. They have They're defensive up players. Too. But Flo- where, where, when you think about Florida for years now, where is – I mean, forget Emmett Smith. That's too long ago. Where is that superstar at? Well, they had Tebow. Yeah, Grossman. No, no. But I'm saying, yeah, Grossman. No, at the NFL, uh, come on, Grossman. You give me that hometown discount. <laughs> All right, let's be honest. At the NFL level, give me a, a light, you know, hands down, I got one right now. Superstar. Right now, who's on the verge of becoming one? Joe Hayden. Here, here we Joe go, Hayden, verge. Yeah. I was, I was going to say I'm saying Joe Hayden's nice. Until he gets there, I don't want to hear it. What about Alex, uh, what's the dude, play for the Bears, the defensive what's line? The dude, um, Brown? Alex Brown? Yeah, he's, he's, he's decent. nice. He's decent. decent. What about I don't the, even think uh, he plays with the Browns. Kids. I think he's in New Orleans. The oh, Pouncy yeah. Kids. Yeah, Marquise Pouncey. He's a rookie. Very, oh, yeah. very good player. Very yeah. good. He's a pro bowler. He's not rookie. Sean O'Hara and, from Rutgers. And his younger brother just got drafted, yeah. too. Yeah, so. his twin brother. His twin brother. He's a actually. minute older yeah. than, than, actually, he's a minute older than the, than the one that, I don't know their first names. Uh, he's a minute older than the it's kid. Marquise from, and, and, and uh, I know, I, no, and when I say. And Mike. And Mike. When I say I don't know their names, I'm talking about, I don't know which one's Marquise and Mike. Oh, yeah. You know, so the one that, that came out yesterday, <laughs> that got drafted yesterday, is a minute older than the kid that plays in, in Pittsburgh. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Marquise is the stealer. How about that? Okay, yeah. Marquise was actually saying the only reason why his brother is a minute older is because he pushed him out. <laughs> <laughs> so they're having this, you know, this little battle going back and I forth. I didn't like one of the comments I heard yesterday. I think it was. I don't know if it was Kuiper, but somebody made the comment yesterday that the, the bloodlines helped Mike get in really? and get drafted higher because of what Marquise did this year as a rookie. And I, I thought that was a little disrespectful. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah. mean, yeah, yeah, you have good bloodlines. They obviously can both play. But he's a whole other person. You can't just, you whole know. whole other system, too, yeah, you exactly. know. But they did show. I, I saw Mike's highlights after he got drafted. <laughs> he's, pretty, he's pretty legit. So. Oh, no, he, he's real with his. Yeah. I, mean, I think they're both going to do some stuff. Look, exactly. let, let, let's be realistic here. Do the bloodlines hurt? No, they don't hurt you. No. If it does anything, it helps you. Exactly. But does the kid deserve his own credit? But he said he went higher no, I understand. because of his brother. But listen, it, I don't know if that's the case, but. It could only help him. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it would hurt him. Exactly. Maybe Tim Tebow got him drafted high. Maybe Tim Tebow. You know what I'm saying? They block for him, man. Look. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to get some dude. Get some dude. I mean, listen, the bloodline. People hate on Tim Tebow, man. Yeah, I, I think he's a boy, baller. Man. I think he's a baller. Like, at the end of the day, he can't. Uh, you don't like his throwing motion. You don't like. But he has those intangibles that you can't teach. And he's a, he's a winner. He's a flat out baller. And he's I a ag- winner. So. I agree 100% with you guys, both you guys. But, Lake, you and I had this conversation earlier about Cam Newton. They can have all that at the collegiate level. At the NFL, it's a totally different game. Mm-hmm. All right, Victor was probably burning DBs at the college level like he did the White Lowry. <laughs> he can't do that against Revis Island, no disrespect, because uh-huh. I haven't seen anybody do it. Mm-hmm. You can't do that against so Chad Bailey. But why can't he do Why can't he be the one now? Well, I'm not, I don't mean he can't. He hasn't. How about that? So, man, that's messed up, man. He's I don't sitting mean there it like that. you off the record like, hey, man, we're going to be doing a show together. And now you're going to say he can't beat the man. No, Come I don't on. mean him. You I don't mean it like it? that, Lee. Come on. He understood, he understood my point. Nah, you're throwing me under the bus. Come nah, on. yo. Oh, man. He Revis. He's a bum, man. I, oh, my God. Wow. Putting words into my that's, that's wrong. Listen, the bloodlines <laughs> help, okay? Archie Manning, Peyton Manning, Eli Manning. Yeah, the Manning. bloodlines help. The bloodlines help, definitely. Eli went first overall when, when you still question that. People always do question Eli to this very day, and I tell him this to end the conversation. He's got the same thing his brother has. Yep. You play with him every day. I play with him every day. This guy puts his head down, and I'm a Giants fan. I don't knock him. I'm actually in the Lake will tell you. Yeah. I've had big arguments on here with callers, with co-hosts, with guests, with whomever yeah. about Eli because they bring up this whole Tony Romo. Listen, we could get off the path. We could just get into a whole another conversation. Yeah. But I'm going to stick to Eli. Okay. There are times, though, where even though you back him, you see him make an error, you see him throw a ball high, an interception, you see him with that pout. I see him with that pout, yeah. And he walks <laughs> What's that all of? Does he do that at practice at the high school with you? Um, he, he doesn't he doesn't pout very much when, when we're together. But you know that's just that's just a natural emotion. Just like Romo may may yell or he may 
snap his chin strap off or, or you know, or Brett Favre used to just get mad or whatever. Tom Brady, you see Brady's getting more yeah. and more upset. This past year, he was kind of, he was letting some guys have it this year. But every quarterback has their own, you know, their own emotion. But I want to see Eli kind of just, I want to see him rip into somebody. Is he, is he aware of that? Um, that well, how fans feel that sometimes they think that because of his actions, some people might, you know, consider that. Same thing, or, with, uh, same thing with Donovan in D.C. That he doesn't two care. Laps, two laps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think so. I think I think he comes in. He comes into work every day. I mean, I see him behind. I see him, you know, a little bit behind the behind the uh, the field, off the field, in the locker room, and and he he, he definitely cares about the he cares about us, and he definitely just. Uh, he just wants to see us play better. He wants all of us to play better, including himself. So when he does bad, he kind of just, you know, he, he, he kills himself because he knows he, he could make that throw or he could, he could, you know, he could make that first down. So he kind of gets upset at himself more than, more than at other players. Look, folks, uh, Victor Cruz, wide receiver for the New York Giants here in the building, uh, Forkard River House here in Forkard River, New Jersey, right here on the Sports Journey Broadcast Network. Myself, Lake Lewis, Cristiano Oliveira. We'll take a break. When we come back, uh, we got another hour left on tonight's program. Uh, some interesting developments going on in the NFL draft. We'll give you some updates on that as well. So hang tight, folks. We'll be back. Car owners, does your vehicle have less than 120,000 miles on it? Is it less than 10 years old? Is your current auto warranty about to expire? Well, Cover America Auto Care has a very special offer just for you. With current economic conditions causing bankruptcies and a downturn in new car sales, Cover America Auto Care now offers inexpensive mechanical breakdown coverage direct to the public. You can save thousands of dollars on auto repairs. A toll-free line has been made available so car owners can call and get a free no-obligation quote. This auto protection is backed by an A-rated insurance carrier. Plus, you get a claims department that has an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. 24-hour emergency roadside assistance is also included. You will be amazed at how much you can save on future car repair bills. So call for your free, no obligation quote now. Do not wait. Get covered today and rest easy tonight. This is not a workout. This is a revolution. This is Shake Weight for men, and it's going to kick your butt. Whew, that's it. In just six minutes, guaranteed. Ugh. Ordinary weights isolate one muscle in one direction, but Shake Weight harnesses the power of dynamic inertia to totally redefine strength training. As you shake, the weights at each end fire and recoil rapidly. This piston-like motion sends a shockwave of energy that forces your muscles to contract as many as 240 times a minute. So you build definition, size, and strength fast. And now this technological breakthrough in strength training can be yours for just $29.95. Shake weight is science fact, not fiction. A leading biomechanics research center proved that six minutes with the shake weight burns as much muscle energy as 42 with a standard dumbbell. You get ripped, defined, and stronger, fast, guaranteed. Call and order now and we'll also send you this six minute upper body workout DVD. It's everything you need to add size, definition, and strengthen your chest, triceps, biceps, and shoulders. Technology is all about packing mega performance in less space, right? Shake weight proves it. That's why it comes with this ironclad kick butt guarantee. Do the shake weight workout just once. If your arms, chest, and shoulders aren't on fire in just six minutes, return it for a 100% refund. We'll even pay return shipping. Whew, that's it. Three exercises, six minutes, and the faster you shake, the more intense and challenging your workout. Think you can handle it? Then call now and build muscle and definition in just six minutes a day with Shake Weight for Men. If you're disabled and unable to work, pay attention to the following message. If you're one of the millions of Americans who are disabled and unable to work, you may be entitled to disability benefits through Social Security. Receiving benefits is your right if you suffer from a physical or mental disability. Whether you're applying for the first time or you've already been denied, we can help. 
You'll be matched up with an advocate who will evaluate your situation, handle your application, deal with Social Security for you, and handle all appeals. Best of all, there's no fee until you receive your benefits. To get started, call the number on your screen now. And keep in mind, there are a vast number of conditions that make you eligible for disability benefits and dozens of additions that you may not be aware of. So if you're disabled and unable to work, call the Citizens Disability Helpline today for a free, no obligation consultation. Call 1-800-735-0219. Call now. Hi, I'm Shannon Doherty. I've produced, I've directed, but now I'm doing something I've always wanted to do. I'm going to get my college degree. I logged on to Education Connection, the free service that showed me hundreds of schools and degrees. Now I'm getting my degree in liberal arts. But you could get yours in business, in nursing, even a degree in technology. Let Education Connection help you find the right program for free. Log on now to 41educationmatching.com. That's 41educationmatching.com. Our Fork and River House. Lake Lewis, Cristiano Oliveira, Victor Cruz, New York Giants wide receiver. Uh, we'll give you some information as far as the draft as it uh, goes on tonight. There's some uh, surprising picks, man. I mean, Marvin Austin, that's, that's huge. That's huge. That's big for us. We could always use another. Can't have too many guys rushing the quarterback, so we'll, we'll take him. We'll take him. We'll welcome, welcome to the Giants, and, and uh, I, I think he'll be a productive player for us. Another Tar Heel. Yep. <laughs> All we need now is linebackers and DeMarco Murray. Yep. That's what we need. <laughs> Listen, any chance? I mean, there's a lot of rumors going around as far as Ahmad Bradshaw. Yep. What's his story? Any you think he's coming back? I mean, just your, your gut feeling. My, I, think he's, I think he's coming back, man. I think he's, um, he's put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this organization and, and through injury and stuff like that. So um, he's definitely – I think he'll be back for sure. Uh, if, you know, Chris, you've been saying DeMarco Murray. I mean, I do think he could be a special player – at the next level. I think I mean. that's a special player right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, DeMarco Murray, right? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> no, I mean, he, he is. I think he's one of those players that he, just the fact that he's dropped this far, to me, once again, and Victor and me were talking about this briefly off the air, mm -hmm. I think sometimes the, the, the GMs in the NFL and the scouts, I think sometimes they overdo it. They overthink. I mean, you see a kid like Daquan Bowers drop this far, yeah, I understand that he supposedly has some leg issues, but they said that years ago about Anthony Munoz. And yeah. Anthony Munoz may be the greatest offensive lineman of all time. I right. told you this earlier. I, I would have been easy and ready to come on here and rip uh, maybe a handful of these teams, but the fact that the whole NFL passed up on this guy. Yeah. Here's my thing. I'm not a doctor. I never pretended to be one. I might have done a couple of doctor thingies once in a while, but <laughs> I'm going to tell you, if these guys have the records, they're a lot smarter than I, I will ever be. But look at like, what about Warren Sapp? Warren Sapp dropped. Yeah, but that was that, that that was that was because he because he smoked marijuana in college. And they're still smoking it. <laughs> but, but but my point, I mean, listen, I, I mean, not to you know come on here and get on a soapbox, but yeah. you know, I haven't done, it, and I can safely say that that's me. Mm -hmm. However, if you're telling me that a kid did that and it wasn't you know, a habit where he needed rehab, yeah. you know, it was a recreational purpose or whatever, and he tried it, blah, 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 and somebody found out about it, and that caused that monster in college to drop that far, I have a problem with that. Yeah. I have a huge problem with that. There's no perfect human being on the face well, of the Well, it's the same earth. reason why Des Bryant dropped. And yep. now look at him now. I mean, you and I have had this conversation. I told you, and, and Vic, mm -hmm. we had this conversation talking about up-and-coming Stud wide receivers, and we compared Des Bryant to, to your teammate, Hakeem. And I said I would take Hakeem every day of the week yep. because I know this guy's going to be ready to play every single Sunday. Mm -hmm. And the guy, what do you have, 13 touchdowns last year, 1,000 yards? Yeah, I don't even know how this up. guy was in the Pro Bowl. I'm not being a homer. I'm just saying. Yeah, I thought it, I thought he was definitely a Pro Bowl pick, even though he got, you know, he missed the game, a few games. Got hurt at the end of the season. season. But still, his stats were, th those first, like, eight, nine games he had were, like, through the roof, yo. So I, 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 sure I made a trade for him in fantasy. And he helped me out. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, how many, how many GMs today right now? Mm -hmm. But still, the Cowboys said he's available, you know, for a bag of peanuts and a, and a Coke. You know, GMs are going to take him. Yep. With all the problems, with all the headaches. Exactly. And, and who's to say? See, this is the problem that I have with this whole thing. How in-depth are you going with people as far as their personalities? Yeah. I mean, if, if a guy got into a, a situation one time, 
you know, in college. Listen, when I was at Penn State, I can't tell you how many times altercations almost happen yeah. when you went out. You're young. Exactly. I mean, testosterone everywhere. Yeah, things happen. But that, still, that doesn't make you a bad person. But, but late, there's a difference, though. They'll take a chance on those guys all day, but it's not in the first round where it's not guaranteed anymore. Exactly. They, That's why these guys will fall. That's why round. they – and listen, Des Bryant went late in the first round because he did go late. obviously the salary – it ain't the same as a top 10 pick, and we all know that. And I think so, people would say that he also missed a, a full year, too. So, did listen, the kid that uh, – what's the kid that went to 14 Quinn, to the Rams? Robert Quinn. He was another guy. He missed all – he still went 14. Yeah. But I if mean, he hadn't missed, he probably could have gone He four. probably would have, but now <laughs> if he had character issues, he would have gone past 14. Yeah. But the kid obviously didn't have any character issues. And, and they don't want to – especially now – with the way that money is with these rookie contracts. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. Mark Sanchez, the minute he signed this contract, he became the highest paid player in team history, franchise's history. And another thing I think teams are doing, they're picking, I think this is the first first round that I've seen so many offensive guards and offensive tackles and a bunch of D tackles go. Like, D tackles was a yeah. record yesterday, 12 of them in the first yeah, round. Yeah, that, that, that was crazy. And I think a lot of those guys are, you know, they, like, to, let's be honest. Offensive line and defense, they don't get in too much. In, they don't get in too much trouble. Right. Unless they you're just, Albert Hainsworth. Uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but they, they just kind of chill out. Normally, those the bigger guys just kind of hang out. They don't. They're not out and about as much as as much as a let's say a wide receiver or or a, a defensive back. So I kind I kind of think those GMs are kind of just picking the safer route. They're going the safer route, that the longevity route, and stuff like that. Which you know you can't blame them. You know, stuff. It, it's funny you bring that up, Vic. Mm -hmm. What what the hell's wrong with you wide receivers? What is this? Is this isn't the jeans? I mean, what is this like a, a me 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 type of position? Because I was a me 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 guy when I played soccer. Yeah. But I wasn't in front of the cameras every day. I'd probably be worse. But I wasn't. Yeah. But what is this? I mean, you look around the NFL. Most of these guys, Terrell, Ocho Cinco. I mean, mm -hmm. guy can't even spell his name right. So Chente Cinco, by the way. <laughs> but Ocho Cinco doesn't get in trouble though. Yeah. I mean, he's not. Like, he hasn't been, exactly. has been in trouble with the law. He hasn't been in trouble with the law. But still, it likes attention. He likes attention. I mean, I, I think every receiver, to a certain extent, like like likes attention. But um, you can't. You just can't be too overboard with it. You know, I mean, a, a receiver, you, the proof is in what you do. And a, a lot of guys think because they score touchdowns every week that they're allowed to, you know, be this other character, be a, this different guy off the field, and kind of just showboat and stuff like that. But. You know, that's not the case. I mean, you can show both on the field. You can do what you want on the field, just not towards the other players and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, just don't put the, the ball on a, on a star. <laughs> exactly. Be able, see, that, that's a player that if, if his character issues weren't there, you're, you're talking about an all-time great receiver. Yeah. That, and even Moss now, people don't even talk about these guys. And these guys, you can, argue, you can make the argument that two of the top five receivers of all time. But yeah. you know what? I will say this, though. And, and, you know, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Yeah. And, and I'm a firm believer and not to throw people under the bus and stuff like that. Who, but you're going to do it anyway. It, but I'm going to say <laughs> it. To me, it all went back to my parents. Yep. You know, and I say this to this very day, you know, bless my mom's heart. You know, she passed away a couple of years ago. I would never do anything to this very day just knowing that I'm being watched. I yeah. know both you gentlemen lost parents I as get well. Beat up. You when know you're being watched. Yeah. Front row seats. Yep. <laughs> I might not that be. That exactly. means that means something to me. Exactly. My, my parents might not have been in the front row, but if it got back to them, I know I would have been no, I'm flying saying, over I'm the saying, front row. I'm saying your father has a front row seat now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, now, yep. Yeah. Now. He's down there. And, and and see that that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know when Chris and me talked earlier today about Cam Newton, and I'm I'm. I think he's going to be a great player. Yeah. But Chris is a little skeptical as far as some of the characters. Too issues. many questions. Mm -hmm. And that's a fair assessment. Yeah. But I'll say this. The fact that I saw his father there with him, eh, that kind of that kind of leads me. I know you could say where his father was asking <laughs> yeah. for some change, He was asking too. for some change. But that's but what but he was there for. <laughs> he was getting but free but meal but after the draft. But, but I'm saying this, though. <laughs> but I'm saying this. Work ethic. I'm a yeah. firm believer if your father's home. <laughs> you're getting something out of that. Yeah, definitely. His father played in the NFL. So mm -hmm. it's not like Cam Newton doesn't have a work ethic on the field. That's going to translate, hey, I like, think. My, my question with Cam Newton has never been his work ethic. My question, Cam Newton, has been off his the, character. The field, yeah. Guy did steal whatever it was in laptops. Laptop. He, got, he got kicked out of school, number one. And you know, and look, and you know this. You played at, you played at a very high level, collegiate level. And we all know, if you're that dude, 
they're going to try to cover it up. Yeah. All right, you got to do something really bad for them to get rid of you. Yeah. And I'm right. sorry. So they got rid of him. He went out, did his thing at junior college, did his thing in, in, at, at Auburn. My question isn't whether this guy got a work ethic or not. My question is his character issues. My question is, as far as a number one pick in the NFL draft, you're looking, if they don't come up with some type of salary structure for these rookies, last year the guy got 78. He's going to get in the 80s for a guy that can't take a snap under center, for a guy that has many questions whether you could read a defense or, or not. Those are my questions with a Cam Newton. Now, his father, it's a whole other issue. If the Giants didn't have Eli and Cam Newton was the guy they took. Number one? I don't number, care. No, oh, no, I don't care. See, if they didn't have Eli, would you be okay with that pick? I just told you, number one overall, I'm not investing $80 million in a guy that have all these questions about. That's my thing. If I'm, if I'm the Giants and I don't have Eli, you know what? I'm just going to go out there and toss the season because now I'm either going to get Barkley <laughs> or Luck. You can't do that, man. You can't. <laughs> don't worry about it. You can't do that. Don't worry about it. But I've said this. Giants been horrible a couple I years, think, too. I think it was a bad move for Carolina in the first place. Yeah, I think they um, I think, I think think they need, they needed something, though. Carolina needed something to rejuvenate that program and rejuvenate the fans around that program. They got a coach. And <laughs> but, didn't they, coach. but didn't they take a quarterback last year in the second round? They whether you, whether you like him or not, Jimmy Clausen you wasting hasn't picks. been given an opportunity. You're wasting picks. I mean, they like Matt. They have Matt Moore. They have, they have the, Clawson. And they have the kid from uh, Louisville that came, uh, not Louis, Cincinnati. Cincinnati, right. And, and I'm thinking to myself. Wait, they got a, who was that, Pike? Pike. Yeah, Pike. They got him too? Yes. Oh, they yeah. pick him Tony Pike. So, so my thing right. is you have all three of those guys, and then you go use another pick on a quarterback yeah. when your offensive line. Wow. I mean, come on, man. I don't care who's behind center. He's going to get beat up until you show up in the interior. I agree. That, once again, goes back to the whole theory of, Guys out thinking themselves, and no offense to the Panthers, that's a reason why they're the Panthers. And wait, that's a reason why. Since we're getting, since we're still talking about Cam Newton, I forgot to make this point about his father. He did take one hundred eighty thousand, reportedly, if it wasn't more. Allegedly. allegedly. Allegedly, exactly. Allegedly, listen. Allegedly, Reggie Bush's parents did their own thing, but that team got punished. You telling me your father takes a hundred? They had a furnished house. You tell you telling me his father <laughs> takes one hundred and eighty thousand? And you have no idea? So you're just going to go to college based on what your father tells you to do, right? That's it. You got no say. It's your father. I, and this, listen, I love my father. May he rest in peace. He, we all know he passed away a couple years ago. But I, I'm going to have some say where I'm going to play. No, nah, I mean, I think everybody knows that there's more to this whole story. So how come story? he gets a pass? That's my only question. Reggie Bush didn't get a pass. USC did not get a pass. Yeah. Well, I've said this, too. I mean, as far as, you, okay, let, let's, let's not stray too far from mm -hmm. that tree. But it's the same kind of subject. Yep. Jim Trestle, coach at Ohio State. This guy had to self-impose his suspension. Yeah. I mean, are you kidding me? You just took uh, USC, Pete Carroll, and basically crushed that program for two, three years. Jim Trestle, uh, Pete Carroll never said he did anything wrong. They but thought, now but now they're coming down on him hard. The only but, thing but is it it's going to be from gonna, day one. Yes, I agree with you. Listen, there's plenty of conversation here when – we talk about a guy like Des Bryant. When he did something in college, he was suspended immediately. Missed a year. But now, do you, do you, do you, do you, see, the, do you see the difference here? Do you see a coincidence here when you look at Ohio State? These players were all suspended after the bowl game. Yeah. Their coach doesn't get heat on the them until later him, on. But, but the Why, coach it's made Ohio sign, State. The coach made them sign something, too, stating that they're going to definitely come back if Who they cares? play. Who cares? Listen, they could have just thrown that in the garbage. But the NCAA is the double – that's the Ohio State University, <laughs> like they like to say. It's a double standard. Hey, man, I went to Penn State. I don't have any love for that school. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just telling it like it is. I thought personally that Jim Trestle from day one should have had the same suspension the players had. So when they gave him two and then he came back and knew that he was taking heat for this, so he just said that he'd come out and suspend himself for five, that makes a mockery out of your academic institution if you're supposedly an institution for higher learning. It, because it, it goes to show that as long as he's getting W's, he can do whatever he wants. But what did he do in reality? He covered up for his players. Isn't that what you should? I mean, if no. you're, you're a player, don't you want your coach to cover up for you? This isn't the pros, <laughs> man. Yeah, but <laughs> not, not if I'm doing anything illegal, though. You, you know, know what I'm saying? saying? That's, that's not but the then pros. Again, another thing that, has a, that, I, that I have a problem with in college, like, I mean, trading memorabilia, trading this for, for some tattoos, as a kid, you don't see any harm in that. You don't see 
Like you'd be like, if, if you give him like, hey, I'll give you my watch if you just give me like a like exactly. a couple free tattoos. Like as a kid, you don't see anything wrong with that. But as as an NCAA athlete, that there's there's a lot wrong with that. So well, that, that, you knew though. I knew at Penn State. You knew. Oh yeah, they. You oh, you have give, that. I couldn't give out my uh, uh you know the, the, the uh, any attire that I would get. I had yep. a problem giving it to my father. Yep, because <laughs> as you know, we had that compliance meeting every year before the season starts, before camp. We have that compliance meeting that every NCAA kid hates because it's two <laughs> hours long. And you're sitting there, especially if you're a senior, oh, because you definitely like you've been through it over the years. Yes. But uh, you know, you know what's right and what's wrong, and and you're not invincible. You know, so. I tell you this much, man, and I hate to admit it, because my parents raised me the right way, and my father would have whooped my butt. But I'd be giving away a whole lot of stuff if I was in the NCAs to get me some money. <laughs> hey, trust me, they would. They could tell though, man. It's easy. I don't know. Track. And when you see thing, the kid walking around campus with your stuff on, yeah. or or a national championship <laughs> ring or like a bowl ring or something, nah, nah, and the kid, the kid's a little you crony. You don't give dude. that stuff away. Just, there's players that have it. Yeah, there are. I want to know how the how the NCAA finds some of these things out. Like, how do they go? Like, do they have like an anonymous tip? Oh, oh I, like, I was told at Penn State that there's some students that are walking around that campus that are interning or doing something undercover. And that's what they do. They keep an eye. Oh, they, they go have, to the frats. They 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 look they at actually, everything. They actually they actually had a one of these real sports. Yeah, they actually had one of these real sports <laughs> shows. Their cells on no ESPN joke. where they had a kid that was like a, 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 a agent, and he's he's going to school at USC, and he's trying to get these USC players to sign on, with, and he's doing them favors by giving them rides and golf carts, and those wow. are all violations. Yeah. And I think the guy got these. Something happened to him. He got a fine. Something had kicked out of school. But these guys. Go after these players like no one, because that's guaranteed money. Man. You know, it's tough though, man. It, it really is hard because, you know, I, I know UMass is. I, I've always known UMass for basketball. Yeah. You know, just big time Carmelo uh, Travieso program, and yeah, you know, <laughs> Marcus Camby and the guys. But yeah. you know, Lepidia. but but I can't imagine having go. Now, when I was at Penn State playing ball, I mean, we were second rate to football. But I can't imagine being a star in a school where the, that program isn't necessarily quote unquote household name. Yeah. So for you to be a star, you know, all American, all this stuff, breaking records, mm -hmm. people thinking that you have a chance of playing the pros, to me that's harder than the uh, 12 guys on the basketball team. Yeah, yeah, it's a <laughs> lot harder, it's a lot harder. And you know, the, those years Camby was there, right after that year they made that run, they got all those games revoked. Yeah, yeah those, they that did, Kyle Coach Cal. Incident, yeah. I mean, so, how do you think Marcus Camby's ending up at UMass? I know Calipari's a yeah, great recruiter. Yeah. But, uh, but come on, man. See, here's the thing. I was young <laughs> yeah, at the time. Come on. I don't remember. Was oh, Camby? Do, no, what Georgetown I'm asking. No, I don't. No, no, Lake, Lake. No, I remember the games. What I'm saying is, I don't remember whether Camby was one of these highly touted recruits. Was he? I don't. Oh, yeah, that's what definitely. I don't remember. He was. Almost he was big definitely. time. Was big he? Time. He was leading the league in blocks. No, he but was, that was no. But that was at UMass. No, no, no. In high school, school. Oh, in high school. school. Was he a big name in high school? Oh, that's I'm the question. Sure. He was like. See, me a, neither. I'm he not. was probably at about seventy percent as far as being that big time recruit. Okay. So for UMass to get him was kind of a coup, you know, considering he was a big man. Yeah. But it wasn't a stretch. It wasn't like okay, you know, Duke and Carolina were all over him because if exactly. that were the case, he wouldn't have been at UMass. Sorry. But the point is to see some of these guys ending up. Like, I'll give you a perfect example. O.J. Mayer. Yep. How did he go to USC? He went to USC. But they have no basketball the, program. The best part about USC is he <laughs> called the coach and he said, I'm going to come to your school. I'm going to contact you. All right, don't call me. And Tim well, Floyd. He's from and West he went Virginia. With it. And Tim from Floyd, West Virginia. What does he know about USC? Yo, Tim Floyd was like, I ain't going to play like that. Whatever, brother. You got yep. my number. Hit me up. Hit me up. <laughs> and and uh, they got uh, Taj Gibson that year, too, They right? certainly did. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I can, besides Gibson, L.A. kid, I, I can see you, you wanting to stay there. Well, the Rosen yeah. went there. Yeah. The, that, the, Rosen. Rosen. the Rosen went there. Yeah, you know, and, and I mean, if you if you go back, you know, I'm a little older than you guys. But, okay. I mean, I remember Harold little. Minor, Baby Minor, Baby Jordan. I a mean, little. Didn't he win a dunk contest? Yeah, yeah he did. I Baby Jordan. I remember that. Baby I remember Jordan. that. You were in diapers that. at the time. Yeah, I was a little young. You, you, little got, young. you got any ball skills? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm pretty good at basketball. Okay. That was my first love. I was actually, I actually didn't start playing football in high school until my junior year because I thought I was a basketball player. And so what happened though? What, what, what? Uh, my coach, Coach Benji Wimberly, he was like, "Yo, man, <laughs> give it up." He said, "Yo, man, there's seven <laughs> rounds in the NFL." 
There's only three. Two. There's only two, two. In, the, in the NBA. That's a very good you choose. point right there. So you choose and guys get in as a free agent. So you choose. Yeah, but big, big difference ain't guaranteed. Guaranteed money. Exactly. Like I tell people exactly. all the time, well, bums are making a million on the bench. The worst, yeah. the worst player on the Wizards. I don't mention names because I gotta go back. Mm -hmm. But the worst player, as far as minutes played. 950 this year, guaranteed. Yeah, my boy, um, Gary Forbes went to UMass. Gary Forbes. Gary Forbes. He's, he's playing with Denver. Denver. You know. Was playing with Denver. They got knocked out. Yeah, he, 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 <laughs> got, he was playing with Gone Denver fishing. exactly. Gone but, you know, he was he he was getting paid. He wasn't he was he, he was getting some tick early on because Melo was hurt. This was like early in the season. But as soon as those guys got healthy, he didn't see the court. But he don't he matter, was, man. Financially, he, he was chilling healthy, out. He healthy was and good. paid. And you know yep. what? It's healthy most likely paid. guaranteed for next year. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Probably, best part. Yep. That's why the best think, part. Why well, you, you have think to Kyrie come? Irving coming out? I mean, <laughs> there's a yeah, no-brainer. That was crazy. That's some, another jersey Some kid. guys have him number number one. Oh no, he's gone. He's gone. He's he's going number one to Cleveland. If That's Cleveland crazy. go, if Cleveland gets the first pick, remember there's a little lottery. Oh, the lottery. They can't there's finish worse lottery. than third. So <laughs> put it like this: he's slotted for third third money at worst. I tell you though, I'm surprised he came out. I'm not. Think about it. When you, look, I know you're not, but I'm saying. Look at the possibility. Austin Rivers and him in a backcourt. Oh, my God. Okay, but let me Dude, say hang this. up the banner but right me, now. But let me say this, though. Or look at this possibility. Number one, guaranteed $3 million a year. He's <laughs> As out. an 18-year-old. He's out of there. See ya. He's out <laughs> of hey, man. I'm gone. The NBA might be going through what these guys are going through now. CBA. He might oh, be oh, just they... sitting at home doing nothing. Exactly. But he's paid. No. Once. Once. But, but he'll get the signing bonus right away, though. Yeah, that, that, yeah, he'll get that quick. <laughs> you got it's, it. It's, it's ironic to me how the NFL, NBA, and baseball all are up for all the contracts. All three all of the them. CBA's absolutely. expired the same year. And you guys are going to be used as leverage for each exactly. professional sport. They're going to exactly. be like, oh, the NFL players. Mm -hmm. But see, the, the one thing that's different, though, is like Chris just said, all those leagues guarantee money. Guarantee money except for us, yeah. Now, I had a point. I posed this question. I'll ask both of you. You would think naturally, right, out of all of the major sports, the NFL, you guys being the biggest entity in the country. Yep. You would think that you guys would be the highest the, paid, the league, the highest paid that would get guaranteed money. But somebody posed a good question to me. Mm -hmm. It's also the most physical, also the most injury prone. Also, yeah. So why would you guarantee? Well, guys and not money? just that, and they have fifty-three guys as opposed to twelve mm -hmm. on the sure. roster. Exactly. Well, fifty. Exactly. What is this? Fifty, fifty-three and uh, seven, 53. so sixty, right? Fifty-three and seven. Sixty guys. Squad, so sixty guys on a roster. But you know let me I'm propose this though. Go ahead. If that's the case, and you all just said very astute answers, you gave great answers on that. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Why would the owners <laughs> ask for two more games then? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Why? Because but, money. But, money. But you give your it's, – it's almost like if you're – and I'm not trying to say yeah. you guys are horses. I'm not yeah, saying yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But it's like if you're – if you have horses and you know that they have to run those four or five races per year and you, you see horses breaking down after three, why would you add a seventh – a sixth and seventh race? Well, because here's the thing. I think the players would actually – I just – my personal opinion, I'm not a player. I don't have any inside information. But I think the players would actually sign up for the extra two games if they got some more, like, job security. Maybe adding some more, another five players to the roster. Because now you're helping each other. That's five more guys per team. You add that up times 32, add it up. Yeah. I think, I think listen, uh, they're saying understandable. Like, it's smart to say no because that's why it's called negotiating. There's a bigger fish to fry there. That, and, and, see, that's where I think the owners are, are missing something here. You add two more games to the schedule, and you lessen the preseason. You're also watering down your own product. Forget they can't yeah. see. But here's my thing: I think that they're absolutely Vic. I mean Vic. Yeah, Vic, Vic, you are Vic. I was thinking about <laughs> Victor. I keep calling you Vic. Victor Cruz of the New York Giants. Listen, you obviously made a big name in the preseason. Yeah. So I think you're gonna lean my way. I can't understand why they would even take two games away. Listen, you don't want to play Eli Manning? Play the Victor Cruz of the world because that's how he got his name. Well, without well, Victor doesn't – I mean, uh, Eli doesn't play anywhere. But, uh, but <laughs> I'm just but, – I mean, that's so it dispels that whole notion. Well, well you, got, you, you do have stars that have gone hurt over the last couple of years. But don't play those guys. You know those guys are going to make the team. Anyway. Without that, without that game against the Jets, maybe Vic – is not a New York Giant today. Well, Maybe. See, well, no, and I, that's what I'm saying. But you're – You need those games. You need and, those games. I'm a big because fan at of practice, those Because at practice, at practice, you might be at Timex facility. It's empty. There's yeah. nobody there. It's totally – your nerves are totally different. Yep. 
Yep. You're playing I, your intensity, your your in, and the other opposing team's intensity. It's totally different, man, than it is playing in a, a, well, in a you, practice you, squad. You lose, you're, you're gonna you're gonna shorten. Also, I, I look at it this way mm -hmm. too. Let's not look at just the young guys. You know, the, the Victor Cruz's of the world. Let's go now to to Peyton Manning. You add two more games on your schedule, mm -hmm. you're giving defenses two more games to knock out your cash cow. Yeah, but they would have – like, <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, exactly. man. Like, they it's would true. have, they would have another bye. I, I've always thought – this is since I was young. Even whether I, I actually thought it should be 20 games. Now you're going to call me crazy. Oh, my God. Now you listen, are crazy. I, it might be crazy. But, look, <laughs> I think the NFL should take advantage of the month of February – it's the most boring month of the of the year for a sports fan because mm -hmm. once the super well now you're moving the Super Bowl to the second week of February, yeah. but when it was at the end of J uh, January for most of the times, the whole month of February until you got to the end of the, well, not even the end of because most of these conference Don't tournaments, or yeah. or or you know really the second week of March. Yeah. People don't – the March Madness starts at the end of March. It doesn't start March 1st. Yeah, it starts. So that whole month is dead. They don't need fans, but that's an option, another window for them to just capitalize on, on, on nothing else going on. 20 exactly. games. Well, 18 now, I guess. But, listen, they're going to have 20 I games. I don't think it's going to go 18 regular season games. I, I mean, I, I like, I'm a big fan of the preseason, man, because a guy like me and, and other guys, free agent guys that are going to come up and trying to, you know, make a name for themselves, they need those preseason games to prove themselves against other talent, against other NFL talent. Oh, and, I'll uh, throw one, another look, thing look, at you. If you're a new coach, you're Ron Rivera now at Carolina. You, you need evaluate. every preseason game, and even to get your system to make sense. Exactly. You got James Harrison in Pittsburgh. Fina. Mm -hmm. he went this guy was cut a bunch of times. Yeah. Ravens yeah. cut him. I remember. He was, he was cut a bunch of times. Yeah. What do you think he made his name? In week six? No. It was preseason. <laughs> yeah, preseason. I think, I think it's going to be a lot more emphasis in practice now. I think obviously it has to practice. be. Practice. <laughs> practice. <laughs> practice. <laughs> exactly. We're in Philly town over here. We're talking about practice. <laughs> We're talking about practice. <laughs> not a game. Not a game. We're talking about practice. That's classic practice, <laughs> man. I mean, how silly is that? <laughs> See, he agrees. How silly is that? You want to take away preseason. How silly is that? <laughs> Listen, it, it, it needs to be done. NFL needs their preseason more than baseball needs spring training. Yeah. Needs it more than NHL needs their water. I wouldn't say more. Because not, maybe not more than MLB because these guys need a whole month to get their timing maybe back. Get their arms the, and stuff. Maybe right. more than the But the NHL, it's only like seven games in the preseason. NBA is only like seven games. It's not that. What's 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 seven games when you compare it to eighty two? Exactly right. <laughs> well, I, well, that's a whole other story for a whole other day. That that mess is <laughs> way too long. Anyway, yep. nah, it's fun. He's a big baseball guy too. Uh, one one sixty two. You know what? You know you know what I call baseball, Vic. Yeah. Called baseball, my telenovela. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> every single day is a new episode. Something new, right? Something new every single day. Yeah, I'm a now big Yankees guy. I'm Spanish a big Yankees songs. guy. I won't like even if I don't watch the game, I'll catch it on a ticker, and I see like the Yankees lost, I'd be bummed out for like the whole day. I get, I get really, I get really edgy about my Yankees. Man. You but see that? That's that's even more disheartening to me personally. <laughs> that you could be a diehard Yankee fan, being from that area, from the area, uh -huh. but then you could be a Cowboys fan. That just, but they're just, America's team. They oh, were, they no, were they America's were America's team. team. They still America's are. team now, to me, it, it, without question, don't I don't care it. what anybody says. Don't say you it. look at the way they fill stadiums up when they travel, okay. it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, could give you that. I could give you that. One, actually, we played them in the preseason, and I'm in the crowd. I mean, I'm, in the, I'm on the field, you know, warming up. And um, they, we kicked it off, and the game started. I think they scored the first touchdown. I looked up. There were more terrible <laughs> towels in there. It was like they covered all the blue with yellow. And I was yeah, like, man. what? what is, uh, am I in Pittsburgh right now? Like, I FedEx Field two years it ago, was man. It was, it was a, crazy. It was basically a home game for the Steelers. Yeah. That's how bad it was. That's, that's America's team. Make no mistake about it. People hate when I say this about the Cowgirls. <laughs> but the Cowgirls won two titles back in the 70s, whatever it was. Uh -huh. They won their three in the 80s. Haven't been relevant in between and after. How's that America's team? They went to five, what? They went to an additional five Super Bowls and lost or whatever it was. They lost. Who cares? I don't see any Giant fans talking about the 2000 Super Bowl against the Baltimore Ravens. 
Very I don't true. think I don't think most John fans even remember that. That was embarrassing. When you just said that, it made me think, and I'm down there, and I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, they did get blown out. I mean, seriously, yeah, the, the kick returner. What's his name? Lewis. Matter of fact, returning who's the quarterback. Kicks. Who? Oh, oh, Kerry Collins. Kerry Collins. Kerry Collins. Stater. Kerry Collins. Stater. Wow. I think he had, you know, he's, that's right after he got off the bottle. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> what, what, my, why did Carolina let him go? He, Come on. He was man. drinking too much out there watching NASCAR. He, he took Carolina <laughs> to the NFC Championship. He did. Too. That did. was before NASCAR became big in Carolina. You know, I, I stick with my Penn Staters, man. You know, you can let you guys defend your Cowboys and your Giants. What's what's I stick with my what's Penn my Staters. man's name? Number one pick, blew his knee, Kajana Carter. Oh, I man. feel bad for him. It's man. a couple of them. Blair Thomas Phil. came up here to the Jets one year. Boom. All those running backs are bums. Curtis Anus. Do you even <laughs> bum? What is Curtis Anus doing? He's a right bum. Now? They're all well. I can't say bums because compared to me, they're probably superior athletes. Yeah, and I always tell people, but, don't call. But I've been getting you, you can't shape, call right? guys bums because, like I've always said. Mm-hmm. The, the guy that you consider the worst player in any uh, professional sport will come to your rec league and own and tear you. It up. Own yeah. you. And tear it up. Not in soccer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play football, so I don't doubt it. But not in soccer. You, you I'll, soccer tell you, fan. I'll tell you what. If Ronaldo comes to your rec league. No, but wait, wait. But you're talking about the best. It's like trying to compare me. Okay. Um, the worst. Let's Who's the worst? I mean, see. now you can't the say. The worst? It. There is no worst. There's, guys in, the, there's <laughs> guys in the MLS that I'll run circles around. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Not run because I can't run. Too fat. But you know what I mean. I could play. I think he's talking about like 10 years ago. No, man. <laughs> Mentally, you see yourself doing those things. It's just like me to this very day. I'll go to anybody's gym, and I can shoot with the best of them. Mm-hmm. But if you get up on me now, I may not have that speed Wait. anymore. <laughs> Big difference. I can hit the wide open jumper all day. No, man, listen. Uh, I never said. I, I, I never said I could play a whole game. Bring me in 15 minutes. So, 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 what <laughs> position did you play basketball while? I was a point guard. I was a point guard. Yeah, that was me. Hey, man, our Knicks need point guards in the future. Are you available? A Knicks, you a Knicks fan? No, I'm not a Knicks oh, fan. I'm hold a, on, hold let on. Let me guess. He's a, a Lakers, Lakers fan. or a Celtics yeah, fan. I was just about to say. Neither Bulls, one. Neither Bulls, one. Bulls, Jordan era. The bandwagon came I, down no, the street. I already no, know. Because no, every no. player we talked to have said this. You're I'm a Miami Heat fan, aren't you? I'm a Heat fan. I'm a, Heat. Every I'm a LeBron has, fan, though. Listen, I'm a LeBron fan. Every player that we have done this <laughs> with have, oh, my God. It's like, <laughs> we, 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 we. Who are you talking about? Oh, the Heat? Oh, my God. No, these God. guys all of a sudden That's started a... speaking French. We, we, we. Look, let's <laughs> do this. We got some good stuff. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, uh, we, we, we want to get your thoughts on your Heat's chances okay. against uh Boston Celtics got coming a big up. Series coming oh, yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And if we don't get through this, I might, I might just. Kill you're not getting well. Go crazy. You're, you're not getting through then, the then, series. Then we gotta get you a straight jacket. Because <laughs> <laughs> you right you you're straight. not getting through the series. Let me tell you that. We'll take a break, folks. Victor Cruz, wide receiver, New York Giants, right here, Fork River House, Fork River, New Jersey, with myself, Lake Lewis, Cristiano Oliveira. Hang tight, folks. We'll be back. Tired of lugging out your heavy, bulky pressure cleaner? You need the amazing Water Jet. It turns your ordinary garden hose into a super power washer, powerful enough to clean second story windows. Here's how it works water flows through the volume reduction chambers where pressure builds until a powerful jet stream blasts through the precision engineered solid brass tip. The control valve regulates the water pressure. Great for siding, umbrellas, and awnings. Blast grime and weeds off brick and paver driveways. It attaches to any garden hose so you can take it along boating and camping. Quality built with stainless steel aluminum and solid brass and only $19.95. You'll also get the bonus fan tip that creates a powerful fan-shaped spray. Scour away mold, scrub wood decks and docks, patios and pool decks, cars and trucks. Dial back the pressure to gently water flowers. There's more. We'll double the offer. You'll get two amazing water jets and two fan tips for only $19.95. Just pay additional processing and handling. Call to get the jet. To order Water Jet, call 1 800 973 9853. Call now and we'll double the offer. Call 1 800 973 9853. NCAA Women's Basketball. All day, every day, our game. Filling it up, knocking them down, and bringing it home. It's basketball at its purest. Family fun and great entertainment, there's nothing like it. NCAA Women's Basketball. All day, every day, our game. Dear Bowflex, I dropped eight dress sizes, 36 pounds, and all I had to do was walk. 
This is the Bowflex Trek Climber Machine, the easiest way to walk and burn up to twice the calories in less time. By combining the motion of a treadmill, a stepper, and an elliptical, you get the calorie burning benefits of all three workouts at once. I lost 30 pounds in four months. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Call now for your free DVD and information kit. You'll see how the Tread Climber burns up to twice the calories of a treadmill. Plus, you'll learn how you can own a Tread Climber machine today with special financing for 18 months. Within the first couple of weeks, I started to lose inches. I lost 50 pounds in three months using the Tread Climber. Call or go online to buytc.com for your free info kit. We'll also send you the Bowflex Insider's Guide with a personal fitness assessment to help you jumpstart your Bowflex body today, absolutely free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bowflex. Sincerely, J.D. Weber. Attention if you have diabetes. Hello, I'm Alan Thick. As the father of a child with diabetes, it's important that I keep up to date with the latest in treatments and technology. That's why I'm happy to tell you about a breakthrough in diabetes care through CCS Medical. You don't need to stick your fingers anymore. This new meter allows you to test on your arm, so it's virtually pain-free. Plus, it uses gold test strips. Real laser-etched gold in every strip provides the ideal testing surface for one of the most accurate readings possible. Best of all, CCS Medical can send you this meter at no cost. With CCS Medical, they deliver your diabetes supplies to your home. They work with Medicare or your insurance to process the paperwork. They even have nurses certified in diabetes available to answer questions. And for a limited time, CCS Medical will also send you a diabetes ID bracelet. All this from a company trusted and recommended by thousands of doctors around the country. Call CCS Medical today. If you want to shed fat and get a body that's shredded, then it's time to get on the rack. The Rack is a complete total body workout system, and it's the hardcore hardware that adds a whole new dimension of variety and intensity to traditional body weight exercises. You get explosive chest, shoulders, and back, big arm blast, and ripped abs on the rack, a fat shredder workout, and a total body muscle building express workout, totally ripped on the rack. Order now and get this special Get Ripped on the Rack 30-day trial for just $14.99. When you order, also ask how you can get the rack system shipped right to your door for free. As an added bonus, you'll get the Rack Nutritional Guide, Custom Workout Guide, and Special Bartender's Workout DVD, plus shipping. That's a total value of $60, all for free, but only if you order right now. Call now and order the Rack Total Body Workout System for this special 30-day trial of just $14.99. Welcome back, everyone. Fork and River House, New York Giants wide receiver Victor Cruz is here with us. Myself, Lake Lewis, Cristiano Oliveira. And, and, you know, we talked about you being a, a, a Miami Heat fan. And <laughs> Chris, for the life of me, help me out here. There is absolutely, unequivocally, no way, Victor, that you actually think that your Miami Heat are going to beat the Boston Celtics. For sure, man. I think that we played them <laughs> last game of the season, and, and we played some pretty stellar defense against them. And I think it's going to carry over, man. It's going to carry over. We, I mean, um, we, we, got, we got Philly out of there. I mean, they, they, put a, they put a good effort in, but they got a lot of young talent. But, we, you know, we took care of them in the first round. And I think that our biggest test comes. I think that they should treat this like our championship. So, come we, on, man. You're going to mention, dropping the we word you're gonna mention us, Philly. Definitely. You're going to mention Philly. That's like the Giants beating the Rutgers practice squad. No, team. I mean, they got a lot of young <laughs> talent. And, and we just did, we did what we were supposed to do, basically. We. We. I mean, that's, oh, my goodness. We, you know, hey, like, like, we had our very smart listeners here on SportsJourney.com telling us to cut him once he said he was a Cowboys fan. <laughs> and you know what? Us being nice guys, we give him a chance. Now he comes out and he says, he redeemed himself with the Yankees, but now he says he's a, a LeBron James fan. Lake, Italian. tell him LeBron is enemy number one in the Oliveira household. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, Victor, this guy last year. Yeah. I went on his radio show. Well, for years, York. for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for years, he kept saying it was a done deal. He was coming to New York. He was coming to New York. Okay. I went on his show last year, and uh, he kept telling me, it's a done deal. It's a done deal. <laughs> the day of, 
Everybody, I, I went on a station in Miami. It was already said and done. He was going to Miami. Yep. This guy still, until he sat there in that chair, he called me back and said, oh, he's doing it from Connecticut, from Greenwich, Connecticut. He rubbed it in our faces. It's <laughs> done. <laughs> he's becoming a Nick. The Knicks practice 10 minutes away I from Greenwich. Never. Listen, we're That's professionals. Crazy. We're professionals. I have I've been tears doing this in my for, eyes, man. I've been doing this for a long time. This guy right here, I couldn't even go on the show the next day. He was dejected. They wow. were like, Chris isn't taking calls today. Wow. <laughs> Listen, wow. man, that, our show was from 8 to 10. You were scared, man. That, that, <laughs> that, little, that little episode started at 9, from 9 to 10. It was like, he was in the house. It was like, my cold, just take it, because I couldn't talk. I was, <laughs> once you said, I'm taking my towns to South Beach, I'm, I'm being honest. Those infamous words, Dude, man. it broke my heart. I felt like my girl dumped me. <laughs> I you guys are laughing. It, 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 dude, I, I, I say this all the time. I emphasize <laughs> it. It hurt me, man. Because you're, you, you know, yourself being a LeBron James fan, yep. this made all the sense in the world, Victor. You come into the biggest market. Listen, Coming to New York, you, you win his, 10 games in a row, they got a tires, statue. Yep. With Jay-Z, that's the Nets, man. <laughs> Jay-Z, you know, we got Pete Diddy. P. Diddy. <laughs> Spike. We, we got, got Spike, Spike who makes movies, who actually comes so now, to every so now game. now you're dropping the we out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now we're saying we, we have P. Diddy. <laughs> Man, nah, I mean, you know, in fairness to Victor, though, being a LeBron fan, mm -hmm. and most of these young players, let's, let's face it, you know, four or five years ago, you were seeing him, you know, as, as a second, third year player. Yeah. You pretty much coming out of high school yourself, that's the guy. That's like Jordan when I was younger. Exactly. Coming out the same year, I was actually fortunate to see him play in one of, one of my high school tournaments. And. And I just, you know, I became a fan since day one, since in high school. So um, I was definitely, you know, just intrigued by his game. And, and, and if it was any guy I'd like to be a point guard of his team, it was definitely LeBron. Imagine just kicking it to him on the wing and he's just going crazy, shooting threes or just but you don't going think to the rack. You don't think he forfeited the greatness, though, to link up with another great player? Yeah, but at the same time, how often – on that team, how often do you see, like, you know, when you see, like, the Heater playing the Nets or something like that, and they show a picture of Come on, LeBron. you're picking the Nets, dude. They're picking, they, you see a picture of LeBron on the TV. When they say upcoming game, Miami Heat against the Celtics, you see a picture of LeBron. Yeah, know? but, Vic, that's not the question. The question okay. here, the, here's the question. Here's the question. I was trying to go I, around it. I, I don't, I listen, everybody knows, and I said this before, okay. and I'll say it over and over and over. He could have gone to any other team in the NBA but paired up with D-Wade or Kobe. Okay. He, went, he took the easy way out, Victor. But how come the Celtics didn't get any slack? Because they got traded there. Oh, they were because they were old bums at that time. No, no they mean, weren't no, bums. They weren't bums. Not, not bums. They Let weren't bums, but they that. were traded. Let me There's that. a difference between being traded and you and choosing, choosing to go to somewhere go? as a free agent. No, Listen, but they kind of came Garnett. together. And, they and, and like Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, Paul, and Paul Pierce, mm -hmm. as good and as great as they've been throughout their careers, they're not LeBron James or D Wade. Never at any point yeah, but in those guys' all careers. All -stars. They were all they are all all star players. But we're talking about a player that people were saying was the next coming of the greatest of all time. Okay. You forfeited that. He forfeited. I because would, if he honestly, wins a ring this year, it's gonna I'd be I'd forfeit it too. For for some i would forfeit that for rings. Oh if you tell me if you tell me the team had the best record in the league the last two me, years. If you tell me that I'm going to play my entire career and be the this chosen one and probably only win three rings. And you tell me I can pair up with somebody like Dwayne Wade and win six, seven. But, how, but, but that's hold just on, hold on, good. Man, first, you got to win one. Good. You got to win one before you get to six. You got to win one, two, three, four, five before you get okay. to six. No, no, let me rephrase that. You got to win one before you said, can start that. No, I just said they got to win one. Yeah, mm -hmm. but how, how can you – listen, listen. How can you anticipate No, that? no, no. Well, what I'm saying is – did Cleveland the last two years, obviously before this year, did With the they best not record have the, in the best league. record in the league? In the league. That's guaranteed that that team was on the cusp. He no. just had to keep taking they his lumps, man. They weren't on the cusp. <laughs> they might they, have they the best record, but they, they weren't on no cusp. Enough. They didn't have enough for me. They didn't Listen. have enough in the in the playoff. They didn't have another score. Mo Williams, he, he I mean, he got it done, but, like, he needed somebody else, Dude, man. team up with Amari in New York City. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> Donate to Brooklyn now Bridge it's a, now after it, you. Now it's, a, it, it's everybody's doing it. Camelo's joining up and, and with Amari, and everybody's kind of coming together now. So so now it's going to be like this on every team. So Victor. it's going to – now we'll see where the real talent Victor. is. Victor, Carmelo, love him. Uh -huh. Amari, love him. Yeah. Whomever else you want to mention, <laughs> they're not the next coming. Okay. You got a point. This guy, you got a point. This guy had the world on his shoulders. 
a lot of expectations, but he owned it. This guy did no wrong in I Cleveland. Agree. So if he would have went to Chicago, you guys would have been. I would have hated him. I would have been disappointed. Rose. No, I would have been Derrick Derrick disappointed. It would have been a nice tandem, but I would have been disappointed. I just think that if you're trying to be the man, mm -hmm. you got to go the route Jordan went. Jordan okay. took his lumps. He, he had to go through Boston. He had to go through Detroit. He had to go through the Knicks. But, I mean, he had to take those lumps. Yeah. And but I think that LeBron, to me, quit on that. Yeah. Man, listen, Vic, I'm going to make it nice and short. He didn't pick the Knicks, so I'm against everything else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if him, D Wade, Kobe, Dwight Howard, they Akeem Olajuwon, right? they all come to the Knicks. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I would have been good with that. Exactly. We haven't won a title since 1973. And that's another thing. That's that almost I, as long wow. as the Jets. That's another 1969. thing. 1969. <laughs> but see, that's another thing I always say, too. And I told Chris this on his show. I'm sorry, New York, but I had to say it to him. Oh, be since careful. Since when did the Knicks become relevant? That's what yeah. I was saying. So I mean, you were saying that LeBron was definitely coming there. They didn't have any tradition to really make him come there. Well, it was they, just the lure of the city. That was it. it but, was just but, but if you're going to go based on that, then he was only going to be a Laker, a Celtic, or a Bull. No, because Miami just won a championship in the But what tradition years. is that? But it's five years closer still don't than sell your out 35. The, you still don't <laughs> sell, but you still don't sell out the place. Listen. What but tradition? you got a chance to win a championship in a warm climate. I mean, you can make an argument for Miami as you can New York. That's yeah. the only thing I'll give him. Miami. That's all Can't he go needed. wrong. But he had one other thing that you didn't have. Dwayne had Wade. <laughs> exactly. That's what that's all about. Exactly. Listen, to both of you gentlemen, <laughs> you guys both watched a great performance by Carmelo Anthony and four bums on the court against the Boston <laughs> Celtics. Yeah, my that man, was unbelievable. My man's a hero. Had that they won that game? Had that bum Jared Jeffries and our dumb coach not put him on the court? He caught him a bum. But he's see, a bum. He's you see, a bum. You see who they were comparing that game to, right? The LeBron game against in Detroit. Who cares? Yeah. But they won, though. <laughs> <laughs> they won, though. They might have won. Yeah, but listen. They won, exactly. but that was, that was but, very spectacular. But here's the thing. Yeah, that was, in 10 that was years, unreal. in 20 years, you're going to be talking about that game as a Nick. Nobody's going to talk about what he did against. Nobody's going to talk about what LeBron did against Cle I mean, People against still Detroit. Well, it's LeBron had the last 29 points. Yeah, that's, that's, that was that was unreal. Carmelo, no offense. That game has – it's not even in Nothing, a sniff of a category close. with LeBron's game. Not like, even close. Yeah, nobody else on the court It doesn't him. LeBron didn't either. <laughs> no, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm talking oh, yeah. about LeBron. That's why he had 29 in a row. He's a no. jock. 29 in a row, and you playing against supposedly the <laughs> really? best. At that time, Detroit's defense was, like, was, was, legit. Yeah, Pass the legit. ball, man. Pass the ball. <laughs> 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 he's a jock. It's a good thing he's not a point guard. All right, so, so, so let's give you the prediction, uh, Victor Cruz. New York Giants wide receiver We're talking basketball now. Okay. So so Miami, obviously, you have them. Yeah, I got Miami in seven. That's Miami in seven. That's so easy. What do you mean? I mean, <laughs> the, you the Celtics sweep? are going to put up a fight. Like, they're, they're the Celtics. You know, Kevin Garnett is just, I mean, when he's not, I'm, you're going to love this. When he's not tripping Tony Douglas, he's actually a really good, <laughs> he's a really good player. You know what I'm when saying? he's not picking on little guys because that's what he does. <laughs> You know that's his reputation Chris, throughout Chris, the NBA. Chris, Chris, yeah. is not, Chris is not a big Kevin Garnett fan. No. But let's, let, let's not vent, let's not spew venom. But let's ask the question. Mm -hmm. Let's go down the list here. Kevin okay. Garnett, Chris Bosh. That's a no-brainer. Garnett. Gar I'm gonna have to go Garnett. Okay, at the five spot. Uh, do they even have a five in Miami? I'm, 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 <laughs> hey, I got faith in my boy Joel Anthony. Jermaine Joel, no, oh, Joel I, I Anthony's have no faith in him. <laughs> but but O'Neal's not the same. But both O'Neal's, if you want to throw them both up there, they're you not the same. You give the edge to the Celtics. Yeah, but, but I still baby, give. I still but you give, have big baby Davis. Too. Yes. Well, but he's a power four. But I would, yes, I would give him against Miami. He yes. might be their five because they yes. don't have a five. Exactly. Yeah. So now you got two up for for Boston. Mm -hmm. Your wing, Paul Pierce versus LeBron. That I mean, you know, I mean LeBron. Like, okay. Like, that, that's a no brainer. Your two. Be. Your two. Like all day, D Wade. Okay, now you're that's point. gonna be a, that's gonna be a good matchup though. D Wade and chasing Ray around. The only and then this is the, where the deficiency comes in. The, Who's going to check Rondo? That's the only. It's gonna be yeah. LeBron. That's the only. The Rondo D Wade. Here's the thing. As great as those guys in, in Boston are, LeBron equals for two of those guys. You put Rondo oh, and Ray Allen together. So that that's out of the, that's already. So he's one v two right there. Put and it they like can this. pair everybody else up. I think I think from a sheer superstar status. Mm -hmm. Boston should win the series. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Miami, Miami would win the series. But I think it's what's going to happen is Boston's defense is so good yeah. that they're going to eliminate 
all those other players. But Miami's <laughs> defense has been has been That's playing very really, good really well. They're top five really, in the NBA. Really well. They have, they have, they have. It's gonna be a. I'm really excited to see how this, especially game one, is gonna set the tone for how the entire series is gonna go. You know that your Miami Heat's one and three against them in a the regular season, and they won the last game of the year. Who cares? Miami yeah, Boston wasn't yeah, even. That's the only you game beat game that them by counts. like 30. Oh, that's that's the only game. That's 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 that propelled brother, us. That, game. that propelled us into the playoffs. <laughs> And we're ready, man. I think I think LeBron and, and D Wade are having a long talk they're, with the team, and we're, we're ready. We're ready. Man. Look, look, they're starting. So when, they're when starting you going out to Boston? Down. When you leaving? I mean, Soon. that guy's first games in Miami. Soon. I'm first in the first thing. I'm on the first thing smoking. Man, they started that last game, Boston. They had Delonte West, Jeff Green, Baby <laughs> Davis. Come on, <laughs> man. I'll Come tell you on. right now, the one thing about Boston is they do not. Have, and the same thing for Miami. They don't have a deep, deep bench. Yeah. That's the only concern that they have. Yep. That I have for them, I should say. Especially when Mike Mike Miller's hurt, his, his both his thumbs are hurt right now, and our point guard is an issue right now. I mean, I mean Mike Bibby gives you some offense off off the bench, or sometimes they they start him. Sometimes I mean, uh, Spolster kind of goes back and forth. But I like Chalmers, man. I you like know Chalmers what hurt a lot. you guys a lot? Ha what's his name? Haslam. Haslam. Udonis that hurt us. Him get Udonis Haslam. He was their glue player. That yeah. guy, because that guy will be the one that. You get the tough rebound, get that, yeah. get that tough defensive matchups with a Kevin Garnett yep. that they don't have now. Maybe Randolph gonna, would, wouldn't, gonna, be, wouldn't be that key for them. Yeah, you, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a little bit of Dampier and McGlure this series just for minutes at a time. Yeah, 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 definitely. I They're going to throw some guys out I think Spolster's done a nice job of, uh, of kind of, you know, playing with the lineups and kind of kind of putting together a nice little matchup out there and, and some matchup problems and stuff like that. So. Hopefully he keeps that trend going in, in, in this next series. So, like, so we got to give this guy credit. No, man. He's he, one he of the stuff, man. Most other guys have no clue what's going on. He's breaking down coaching strategies here. He must. <laughs> but since he knows <laughs> what's going on, man. how about you give the team that I said way, way back okay. that was coming out the east of Chicago Bulls? Are you sold on them or are you still not sold? I, I, I'm sold on Derrick Rose. But everybody else got, they got to play. Derrick Rose can't win it all for them. I mean, at some point, Dang's going to have to put up some better numbers. I think Taj Gibson is going to have to put up some better numbers. He needs more. Noah, they, man, needs up, they're needs great more. defensively, but I agree. Lake, he's been he's saying the same thing I've been saying for months. When it comes to the offensive end, they don't have enough guys that are going to put buckets. They're exactly. going to get buckets exactly. when it counts. The only team Rose that I think the that only they guy. have major, major trouble with if they play him. Mm -hmm. I think Miami would give Chicago a lot of fits. And they, they, they gave us But I think Boston, fits. Chicago can get them. I think so. But they gave, they gave Miami a lot of fits during the regular season, man. I was watching those games like, what is going on? We were blowing leads against them. We were up like 15 at we, one point. We. I mean, he like seriously <laughs> is dropping the we, man. God. That's my squad, man. I got to roll with them. I got to roll with them. You think they come out the east? I think they come out the east. And who do they play in the west? I think they play, um, I, th I got the Thunder. Wow, look, he's a smart, smart man. man. I like I this guy. That's, that's what we have, man. That's a, good, that's a good pick. They're tough, man. The Thunder are they tough, They got three team, legitimate seven-footers. Ibaka, oh, he's nice. Perkins, nice. That's and crazy, Muhammad. Let, but let me ask you guys this, because even though I do say the, the Thunder, do you seriously in the back of your minds think that maybe they're still a year away from getting the Lakers? I don't know, man. The Lakers, the Lakers all, but the, then again, I can't I can say the Lakers always struggle in the first round. Which they always do, but like, I don't know, man. I just can't. I mean, uh, Oklahoma City is just. They're when you got the Kevin ball, Durant and, and Russell Westbrook putting up 30 a pop, <laughs> and then Serge is just blocking things from like wherever. But it's their bench, and Harden then the, and Maynard. And, and then Muhammad. Yeah. Muhammad's coming in blocking things and, from, from wherever. And, and the kid, just, what's his name? Uh, Collison? Uh, 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 yeah, Nick, uh, Nick Collison. Nick Collison, another. He's a legitimate yeah. big man. Sure, uh, Miami would love to have him. Six yeah. fouls, man. And, and, then, um, and he can rebound. And then James Harden's coming in and, and, and giving you like 18 off the bench. It's just, it's just they got so many weapons, man. It's just it's I'm, scary. I'm impressed, man. I got to tell you. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. I, I told you we talk about everything. Uh -huh, right here. Uh -huh. so I'm impressed because some guys are like, they couldn't even name the guy opposite them on the <laughs> yeah. field, man. Here, here's a tough question, though. <laughs> Who do you like in the Cricket World Cup? In the world. <laughs> <laughs> might surprise you, man. Wow, he throws out India. I'll be like, whoa. <laughs> they just won the World Cup, actually. You Don't ask me how I know that. You go crazy. <laughs> I'm a big FIFA guy, though, man. I play FIFA all the time. I'm always on my PS3 playing FIFA. 
So um, whoever what's your, wants, what's your team? My, my team is um, Barcelona. He goes no, with all no, the favorites. No, no. Man Real, United. I'm a, I'm oh, Real. Play, I play with Milan. I like AC? Milan. Uh, AC, AC or Milan. Inter? AC. That's my squad. I play with AC. That's my squad. And then um, if I got if I'm playing against a, a, a valuable opponent, I gotta bring I gotta bring Real Madrid out. I gotta bring them guys out. He, guys he's a the you know he's a Miami Heat fan. You know who he was gonna get. <laughs> you know, it's either Barcelona or Real Madrid. He loves Cristiano Ronaldo. But yeah, listen, the guy is dating the, the what is it, SI cover girl. So. He knows what he's doing. You don't need yeah. to hear that story again. It's like always <laughs> giving this bio, man. Come on now. Listen, if, if I was dated the SI cover girl, I'd be Who's throwing better? it all over. Who's better? Messi. Messi? Messi, oh. Messi right now. Ronaldo's a more complete player, but Messi's a better player right now. He's playing to a higher level. They just beat him 2-0 the other day on Wednesday. They beat Messi who? scored both goals. Barcelona beat Real Madrid for the first leg of the Champions League. They played League. them. Oh, they played At them home. Again? At home. Yeah. The first game played was them four a times. Oh, wow. And then they won the Copa del Rey. 1-0 Ronaldo scored. Wow. And then the first leg of the Champions League, they lost 2-0. And Ouch. now they play next week at Camp Nou, where Real Madrid has to come forward. Therefore, opening up their place. And Barcelona is going to, I wow. feel bad. That's crazy. <laughs> it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Knows basketball, football, plays football. Mm -hmm. I love soccer. Yep. All right. Smart yep. guy. So what's Cruz? What's, what's the origin of Cruz? Um, my mother's Puerto Rican. Okay. So um, I, I got her last name. Told I'm half you. Puerto Rican, half black. Told so. you. No, we, yeah. we Told straightened you. that out already. Nah, you yeah. know why I said that? Because my wife's Puerto Rican. Oh, okay. And, uh, he, was, uh, he thought it was Dominican. No, like, we, nah, we, nah, we Yeah, that's the first thing he asked me when he yeah. came in. He, he asked me what I was. You know why, though. You know why, though. Yeah. Trust me, I know the story on this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no joke. When I go home and I see, you know, my, my father-in-law and, and Monica's grandfather, mm -hmm. they blacker than both of us combined. <laughs> <laughs> and people automatically assume Cuban or Dominican. So anyway, yeah. you know, that's what we do. Look no, closely. I had to throw my old Dominicano so yo, you know what I mean? That works all the time when I tell people. He looked at me like, I'm Puerto Rican, so I don't care what you are. <laughs> but the crazy part is, like, all my closest friends are Dominican. All of them. Yeah, that's yeah. big. Patterson and Pasig, man. It's big. Yeah, big a lot, Mexican of, a lot, too. Of, a lot of Mexicans <laughs> there, too. Chicano. And, uh, yeah, they're all over the place. But, um, but yeah. <laughs> all over the place. They, they are, man. They're checking just, the they're kitchen. Over. <laughs> Come on, man. That's terrible. <laughs> Come on, man. That's <laughs> terrible. I got to wash the dishes. No, I'm joking, man. <laughs> that's terrible. No, they're great people. I have a lot of Mexican friends. Great of guys. Course. Hard workers. That's why they're in the kitchen working, because they like to work. Yeah. You tried to come out of that real quick. <laughs> got to get to your car, bro. <laughs> Look, man, we got to get ready to wrap it up. I think they have a DJ coming in here a little bit later on tonight. Uh, but, but this is definitely what we want to do. We definitely want to get Victor back on with us. And uh, Chris, we we'll get you out. going Bring up there, man. Newark. Come on out and have a good time. We always have a good time. But listen, man, very impressed. And uh, we're impressed with what you're doing with the Giants. And, yep. and just living out your dream. You know, that's an important thing for, for kids out there, for people watching that sometimes feel like they can't live their dream or, or have something to build upon, what do you say to them? I think they should just, you know, never take no for an answer. You know what I'm saying? Just keep striving, keep keep going forward. Because I, if I could count how many times somebody told me, no, I can't do this, I can't do that, or you're not going to be able to do that because you live in this type of neighborhood or you're not going to be able to have the resources and stuff like that. So I always I always use that as motivation and, and to get me to the next level and to get me through through every day. So. Definitely never take no for an answer. Keep your head down and keep striving. Keep keep stay on your grind and and uh, good things good things will, will definitely come to you. Nah, man, we definitely appreciate you coming out here, making this long drive to come out of Fork of River House. Yeah. Um, you gotta tweet your guy, you know, your fans, your followers to come out here or most places next. You know where we're gonna be next time. Yeah, um, definitely. You got you can follow me on Twitter at, at Team Vic T A M V I C. I'm I'm all over Twitter. I, I have a I have a opinion on just about everything. So. So feel free to hit me up. Just give people that opinion about how the Miami Heat will lose to the Boston Celtics. <laughs> Sunday at 3.30, baby. Tune Listen, in. man, I told you before, and I'm going to tell Lake, is Lake is trying to come out here, but his wife, uh, <laughs> we got to get permission first. But, you know, Alex and Vlad, and we're going to make it a night. You're more than welcome. He's trying to come out. So what we do you mean I'm trying to come out? Like, <laughs> like I got the handcuffs on me or something, man. He's going to try to come out. You know, we try to represent Sports Journey uh, out in, uh, in Jersey. Keep in mind, that, right wife, that wife part of that paycheck for Sports Journey. So, yeah, We're gonna, so that's because so you paying that night. Even better. All right. So listen, a, oh, come out Friday Lake. night. This is on, this is on Sports Journey. Yeah, if it's on, oh, if it's on Lake, I'm, I'm good. I'm Invite some of your out. teammates. <laughs> exactly. I'm bringing the Bring whole Eli. squad. Bring Eli. Bring <laughs> Eli. Hey, man, I heard for Eli, it's 50 grand. That's not happening. Yeah. You got to break the bank if you want Eli. I mean, when this guy picks you up to go play, back, to go play, play catch. Was he rolling up in a Bentley? Nah, he's, he's you know he's got his Toyota deal, so he he's, he pulls up in the in the Sequoia, 
and he's and he's good. He's good money. I actually so. have a personal of a friend of mine yeah. that lived in the. I think he just moved right after he got married. That yeah. lived in the building, same building he lived out there. Oh, okay. They were living together. You know, not together, same building. Yeah. And yeah. So they used to talk all the time. Danny, that's, that's that's Monica's friend. Live right there in Hoboken. Also, so yeah. we, I'm not dropping addresses. I don't want to get him in trouble. <laughs> but look, we got to get ready to get out of here. I got to set up. So once again, folks, uh, great time as always here on yeah. Sports Journey. Uh, once again, I want to thank uh, Victor Cruz, wide receiver for the New York Giants. Big things expected for him this year. Cristiano Oliveira, myself, Lake Lewis. Have a safe night, everyone. Peace out, everybody. Thank you.